I suck your dick. You do what I say. Okay. <laughs> that is the way it is. That's the way every household is. Like it's every, for the better. Every guy, like this morning, Hannah told me I was taking the garbage out. So <clears throat> I got everything, and there was a tray of fruit that was like kind of starting to go bad. And it just fruit sucks now. By the way, yeah, you can't you can't get good shit. I bought it like two days ago, and it already like started tasting funky. Mm -hmm. So there was a tray sitting there for me to take, and I had my gym clothes bag, and then a garbage bag. Gym clothes in one hand, garbage bag in the other hand. And like I opened the, do the front door and I w grabbed the bag and she's like, don't forget the fruit. And I'm like, I got to open the fucking door to get out the door to get come back and get the fruit. She's like, no, I'm just telling you. And I'm like, I got to listen to her. I was like, mm -hmm. yep, yes, uh, whatever you say. Okay. My, my response is okay. always, don't tell me. Because <laughs> that's what she says to oh, I'm just telling you. Well, don't tell me. All right? <laughs> well, if I don't tell you, you're not going to do it. I feel like fuck. I, that's what I mean. She's like, listen, she's like, I know you're really good at everything that you do, honey. And you're super special and you work really hard, but you're an idiot sometimes. And I'm like, okay. All right. It's like, that's just, but frumpy fucking. Yeah. Okay. Like a kid. I go, okay, mom. Yep. Okay, honey. Okay, dad. <laughs> <laughs> you dumb son of a bitch. I know you'd fucking leave that fruit tray there if I didn't tell you. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. Yes, yes. Yes, you would. I've seen gar bags of garbage sit there for a day because you were somewhere else. Your head wasn't in the game. Get your head out of your ass. Take the fucking garbage. Okay. <laughs> it's time. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. All right, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Frosey, here with my heterosexual life mate, Bob. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, class. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, every uh, Hannah, uh, they were at a meet this weekend, so like I had another weekend of myself. It was a big work weekend with all the fucking orders and everything. Yeah. But, uh, but no, back to on the shit, laid down the law, sweet lovins, played with the kids. Morning, take the fucking garbage out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on it. On it. On yep, it. yep, you got it. Whatever you say. <laughs> she came home with a purpose. Oh man, it was, it was getting a little. It was, yeah. The the pregnancy the pregnancy hormones have set in. Sweet lovin's, all kinds of fun. It's been good. My life is really great. Yeah. We uh, you know, it sucks about the Arnold how it didn't happen. Yeah. The coronavirus, which is just that shit pisses me off. That's a whole other subject. Yes, it is. But uh, so we made good of it quote unquote, by releasing everything that we were going to take to the Arnold on Thursday. Right. Thursday night at 8 p.m., we did the All-American Roughneck and Axe and Sledge Arnold release on Axe and Sledge. Free shipping, free shit, everything that we are taking there. I mean, so we've been doing this for four years. Limited releases, yeah. started with no money, doubled our money, continued to build from that. What occurred on Thursday night with the number of people that were on the website at one time was out of fucking hand. Yeah. Yes, it was. We pay for, you're more tech savvy than I am, mm -hmm. obviously. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> we slowed the platform. Yeah. We have, we have the highest tiered platform you can purchase without speaking to Shopify. Correct. So we have a meeting this week with them to upgrade because we couldn't run reports. Usually what we do is uh, at the very beginning of a release, we release at 8 p.m. and we start running reports at 8, oh, 8 o'clock, 30 seconds in. Immediately, yeah. To make sure that everything is being deducted from the site properly. People's orders are getting processed. Items are being taken away from inventory properly. Stacks are going properly. Everything is running properly. We immediately start running those reports. Mm -hmm. We were unable to run reports. Yeah, all uh, any back end stuff on the website, seeing the dashboard, uh, the amount of people on the site, running reports. It was just as slow for us, if not slower, than what people were seeing on the front end yes. of the website. We yeah. couldn't do what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I was about shitting my pants, freaking the fuck out, thinking it was going to crash. Mm-hmm. 
because that's the that's we've had that happen whenever we were very small and we crashed before we moved to Shopify, the Magento site. Yeah, we had Magento on Go, a uh, small GoDaddy server, yep. and it fucking that wiped what, it out. I was like two and a half years ago. Yeah. So uh, this, what happened last night compared to Black Friday was double. Yeah, double and a half almost. Yes, mm-hmm. which is. Which is very, very wild. But Dave, my friend Dave, he came over this weekend. We shot the shit. Had a, had a night. I haven't seen him in fucking. I haven't seen him in months. Dave has watched us build start from nothing. Yeah. He watched us start AAR in 2016. He was there at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And he, whenever he came over and we were shooting a shit, and uh, he's like, "Hey, dude." He's like, "When are you actually going to stock your fucking website?" And I'm like. <laughs> I look at him and he's like, he's like, when's it not? I'm like, Dave, I was like, what is going on is bigger than I ever could have imagined. Our people, the size of that we are is, is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's a surreal feeling because our goal of reaching these people on a personal level to build them up, to be proud to wear the shirts is happening. And he's like, how much money are you spending on stock? And I'm like, God, Dave. (laughs) So I told him and he's like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. So it's, it's, it's very, very, it's very wild. It's it's hard to reconsider inventory when you're already balls deep in ordering inventory. It's just, it's an uneasy feeling. Yes. It's, uh, and it's not, it's not like we have like 5,000 items. It's like, it's like 25,000. Yeah. (laughs) Fuck yeah. I mean, and uh, that was a, uh, I think a big misunderstanding with everyone. This was not a planned no. appa- online apparel release. Yeah, yeah, this was just quick to, to we, this was just for the Arnold. We had what we were taking to an expo. For which, three days. Which you can only see so many people in three days. There's 1,500 only, people. Right. That's what we had allotted for. Mm-hmm. And it was sold out. That being said, five minutes. if this was a planned release, we still would have been fucked. Because there was that many fucking people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah if we would have, I mean, yes. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Even if we would have ordered triple. Yeah. Quadruple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was wild. It was very, it's, it's fucking awesome. But as a businessman and as we grow, I mean, we are growing at, at such an astronomical rate, which, I mean, that means that the message that we preach and like we're doing a good job, I, I, that, oh, that feels good to me. But my thing is, is people just want to become better people. Well, yeah, it's like, still it's still a problem. They want to represent. Oh, fucking right. And when right. you can't get what you want when you're really into someone or into something like that, you get Bro, upset. Bro, I've missed on releases before. Yeah. I've missed on other releases that I tried to get items. You have too with the shoes. Sneakers. Even with Dixon flannel. Yep. Whenever we go to get a Dixon and I'm like, I'm like fucking hour late to my size. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. All right. So then whenever it comes back or it pops up, I'm on it. Mm-hmm. You know, then I get it. But, um, uh. That's just, it's a growth process with us. It's, it's fucking unreal. It feels phenomenal, but everybody will be happy this week. My, my thing was, I'll say it before, we'll move on from this in a second, but yeah. the pump cover. All right, like, Hannah said it was the coolest pump cover we've done yet. Yeah. And for her to say that about me is a big deal. Yeah. She's like, that's the coolest pump cover you guys have done. I'm like, I know. And she's like, did it sell well? I'm like, babe, it was gone in 30 seconds. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, th- Two minutes. About a minute, a couple minutes, minutes. Mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> a couple minutes. But anyway, uh, everybody will be happy to know that we're bringing everything back. Yeah, we have to. Well, every every item that was on the site, it was way too yep. way too cool. It was some of the coolest stuff we've done, in my opinion. That was why we saved it for the Arnold. The this pump cover will not be done again. This is the last run of it. Mm-hmm. We are we were going to profile everybody that bought one at the Arnold to know that you came to the Arnold. Now we're profiling it as. This is the release that it was because right now where we are as a company, this is, it's so exciting, but I want everybody to make sure they represent and be part of what we have going on. The two tones. I'm excited. We got a lot of plans for them. Oh yeah. And then, uh, the, the red HWMF shirt, everybody wants it. I, I like red. How about I love red. Fuck off. No, you don't. That was my shirt. No, it wasn't. Fucking right it was. I've been wanting red shirts from three years ago. Here three we go. years ago, I was like, we should do red shirts. Nobody wears red shirts. So then I give up on red shirts. Three years later, we should do red shirts. I'm like, fuck you. That was my idea. I have a whole new idea, so that's okay. You can have that one. 
<laughs> I, I think we should do more navy shirts. Nick is navy zen, and it's one of my favorite colors. So, Are you two fucking hearing this jerk off? Listen to what. What are you talking about? I've been saying navy shirts for legitimately like eight fucking months. Here we go. Seth's right. I swear to Christ. I swear to God. I'm my fucking palms. Are I know. I'm gonna fucking slap you. I'm hot as shit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, uh, God damn it. Navy blue. White on navy. Go fuck yourself. We're no, you're not. Yeah. If I, I'm. How about red on navy? I'm gonna slash your fucking tires. <laughs> Dump sugar in your gas tank, Ernie McCracken. <laughs> oh no, but uh, no, it's been good. We're gonna uh, everything end of this week back in stock. We're gonna do another release. So make sure again, be prepared, be there. Uh, we're really excited. Yeah, really yeah, good shirts. The yeah. HWMF with the quote on the back. That is that's my new that is my favorite shirt. Um well done. The printers do a great job. Crisp looking khaki on black. Can't beat white white and khaki on black. Can't beat it. No. And we will be releasing these on allamericanroughneck.com yep. uh and we will be hooking everyone up with a with a discount. Nice discount. Yeah. Just uh do it. the discount code is for all of everybody listening to the podcast is Bob's Dick. <laughs> Get a percent off for every inch. <laughs> You'll only know the percentage on pawn checkout. <laughs> so like seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. I think a nice twelve percent is in order. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll be we'll be announcing that. But Everyone's the code is Bob's Dick. We have to make it from Bob's Dick now. He said it. Yep. <laughs> Put it in there. I don't know what percentage it's going to be, but... should probably make it right now. 100 people trying to use it. <laughs> i got to see how big this thing is. Let's <laughs> see how big this hog is. All this the sudden, discount. 22% off. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking guys. Oh, man. <clears throat> so, weekend was good. Everything went well. Really busy with orders. Everybody that does order, we did free shipping, so we've had we had a stupid amount of orders. Just be patient with everything. And if you ever do have a problem, if you ever do have a problem with anything uh, on All American Roughneck or Axe and Sledge, reach out to customer service. Don't go online. Reach right out to customer service, and we will get back to you. We take the customer service end very serious. Things do happen. Yeah. It's inevitable for human error to happen, especially with a high number of orders. Our goal is not to fuck you over. It's not. Our goal is to make sure that you have a great experience. And if you don't, please contact customer service with either company, and we will take care of you. We'll make sure it's right. The hard thing is also one of the, one of the problems that uh, – not problems, but one of the things that we run into is, is whenever we have these limited releases, how we do with AAR, make sure your sizing is done right. Because if you order the improper size – and we ship it to you, you can't exchange it because there's no other sizes in stock. You can we'll, you can send it back and we'll refund you, but we can't yeah. exchange. Chances that shirt's available in the size you needed are very, very slim. So that's also why we take, it, we, take a, we take a lot of pride in making sure that everything that we have is true fit to size. Like if you're an extra large, buy an extra large. If you're a 2X, buy a 2X. Whenever it comes to hoodies, Pay attention because we do two different types of hoodies. It's a lifestyle hoodie or it's an, uh, like an athletic fit hoodie. And it's like whenever it comes to it, like we'll, we'll mention size up or true fit to size. Yeah. But that's because I used to fucking hate buying clothes online. I still dislike it just because I don't know where I like to find something, especially with as awkward as I am. Yep. You know, I could wear fucking 2XL tops, 2XL T-shirts. But then they're down to my fucking knees now because I'm, like, in between the size. Mm -hmm. So then I just look like I wear a schmedium all the time in my small fucking Elegance Elite T-shirt. You know why I wore this today? I don't know. Because you wouldn't fucking have it on. I knew you wouldn't wear yours. I, I just pulled mine out this weekend, though. Did you put it in the fucking bin so you don't wear it, or are you going to wear it? No, it's on, it's on like, Jesus. my wear shelf. How about... 
at last week we wore the same fucking shirt twice and I had to change it. Yeah. Because <laughs> it was like, it look, it would be like, oh, you two are too much of jerk offs. No, it happens almost every fucking day. Yeah. He, he had to change his shirt on Thursday. Yeah, the red one. And then the, then the, on Friday we had the chicken and rice shirt on. Oh, yeah. We had, both had the same shirt again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we went to breakfast together and you're like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> same fucking shirt. <laughs> jerk offs. Mm. Oh, no. It was the new Arnold tee. Oh, it was. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. the Arnold tee. The Arnold Classic, really, it it, it, it chapped my ass. Yeah. It really did. It really pissed me off. Uh, I think the coronavirus, I'll say it again, I think it's a fucking, I think it's complete bullshit. I think it's a fucking political stunt. I think the media is pumping this up. I don't see any fucking, pe- anyone from the CDC, anyone from any top medical center anywhere freaking out. The media is freaking out and causing this huge economic stir. Like, we're, like... It's going sh- fucking batshit crazy. And I'm like, more people are dying from the flu. We have way more problems in the world. And this, they're making this huge. It's, it's killing people that like, are immune deficient. And I sit here and the only thing I can think is this is nothing but a political stunt and a money-making scheme. I believe that there will be, there will, like, okay, the coronavirus isn't going to disappear. It takes 18 months to make a vaccine. Okay, it's not going to disappear. It just can't pop up. What's going to happen when the media stops talking about it? Because the media is going to stop talking about it. Yeah. Because the flu kills more people. The media just Way more. needs an agenda right now. Mm-hmm. This is their agenda. It's going to, like... It's not going to get worse because people will recover from it. Yeah. The flu kills people. How many, would we say 56, 58,000 people in the world the flu kills? It's a ridiculous amount of people. Yeah. And here we are about this. I think that it's just going to be pushed to another agenda and then it'll disappear because there'll be something more important. No money will be able to be made from it. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that people are hoarding toilet paper? Yeah. Yeah. People are hoarding hand sanitizer and toilet paper? Uh, and what was it? Soap. I'm and, like, and soap. I'm like, what the fuck is going on Buying the shit out people? of soap. Like, the, the amount of propaganda that's getting pushed from this is out of control. Did you, did you see, uh, it was a behind the scenes, they were, like a news crew was in a store filming the shelves and they were pulling the stuff off the shelves to film the aisle. And they, were pulling, they were pulling the toilet paper off the shelves. Who shelf. was the film people? Yes. The, the news. Cr- yeah, the news. The news was taking the items off to show that it was empty. Yes. The entire fucking store is loaded with food. It's ju- it's like us going to Giant Eagle right now. And then they, they removed everything from the shot. It was behind them. And then shot the news anchor in the aisle, walking down the aisle. Okay, there you go. That goes to just prove everything. Listen, I, I, I don't... This is... I don't jump sides or I don't get involved with anything like this. No, you're right. I, I you hate are, politics. I hate watching so the far fucking away news. From, yeah. Bro, I live on a fucking farm. The only thing that affects me is like the weather, the weather. <laughs> some animals, wildlife. That's fucking it. Yeah. You like that. After a video I watched with uh, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Bro, it's, it's. You you cannot, yeah, these are not uh, doctors or the CDC making these fucking uh, broadcasts, the media. They do not know what they're talking about. They don't. No, it's an agenda. Yeah. It's being pushed. Both sides, it's like, it's like there's teams now, the right and the left, and like, they don't, it doesn't even matter if you're right, they just do it to, it's, it's just, it's wild. It's blowing my mind. I hate to sound like. Like, like, like conspiracy yeah. type shit? Me too. I can't stand that stuff. I but, can't stand it. I mean, it's it's all right in front of you. It's all there. I'm like, you canceled the biggest expo in the fucking country mm-hmm. for something that isn't even close to being as dangerous as the flu. No. The flu's way more dangerous. Hey, I bet you there's going to be a corona vaccine next year. I bet you there'll be a corona vaccine right next to the flu vaccine. Oh, but it's only for this strain. I, uh, I It's going to be, it's billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Billions. Look at the fucking economy. The economy's taking a fucking hit from this. 
Corona, Corona is going to go out of business. So there's always these things that come about that are going to wipe us out, right? Every year there's something that's going to kill us. Is it every year? West, or Nile, is it every... West Nile was going to kill us when we were kids. Is it every year or is it every election year or is it... Every election year something's like, going to we're going I to want die. to look at that. I want to look at those dates. I want to see what oh, the yeah. fuck's going on. Yeah, follow political, follow political fucking uh, channels on Instagram. You'll see it. It happens every two years, every four years, there's fucking problems. There's something that's going to kill us, wipe us out. Remember, we were all going to die in 2012 because of the Mayan calendar. Hmm. Jay knows he's a weatherman. But, yeah. We we're all going to die. <laughs> okay. The world's just going to stop turning because, no, dickheads. There is so it, it, much bullshit out there that it's, it's, they're just scaring the fuck out of people. They're scaring the ever-loving shit out of people. You mean to tell me that you motherfuckers don't wash your hands? Like they're telling everybody, wash their hands. Bro, I wake, whenever I fucking go somewhere, say I'm at work, we're at work, you wash your hands. Whenever I go home, the second I walk through the door at my house, I wash my hands because I just was outside germs and stuff. I'm coming into the place that I live and sleep and lay and my family's there, so I wash my hands. If you don't do that, you're fucking weird. Like, you're a dirty bastard. I have hand sanitizer in my truck. I always have hand sanitizer on me. I'm a fucking dad. Yeah. I watch my kids eat their fucking fingers. I'm like, yeah, here, put hand sanitizer on. This is mind-blowing. This shit, I can't believe that people are this fucking stupid. Eh. I don't know. Watch them. They're gonna ca- they'll cancel March Madness. Huh. They'll cancel fucking. They'll cancel all kind of shit because of this. Well, how about uh, the big, uh, big machine expo in Vegas? Oh yeah, cat. When yeah. we were over there, Cleveland Brothers. Yep. They're telling us they're fucking out there. The- Co- companies backing out left and right. Yep. Biggest fucking machine expo in the fucking planet. Yep. Every happens once every three years. Yep. And they're fucking canceled. They, think, people are dropping out. I think Caterpillar had a like. What did he say? A fifteen million dollar fucking uh, a whole setup. Setup they outside. Like, they spend like fifteen million dollars for that whole thing, bro. It's biggest. It's their biggest expo in three years. Yeah. Yeah. Backing out. Um, losing their ass. It's unbelievable. It's not real. Fuck, dude. I, but, I hate to say it, but it's like, I mean, there's probably. There's probably 10 to 20 more, 10 to 20 times the amount of people that have the coronavirus right now that aren't even, that aren't saying they have it and they're going to recover and be just fine. Yeah. It's because they're all walking around. They're like, fuck, I have a cold right now. I'm sick. I have a cold. Yeah. Should probably stay in so no one else gets sick. I'll be good. Kind of like the flu. The thing that kills legitimately like a hundred times more people. Oh, man, it's crazy. It's just blowing my mind because it's all through the news and everything. And I'm like, man, like they're making me feel like um, they're making it feel like a zombie apocalypse. Well, it, it makes me like it drives me nuts that I'm not the only person that's like connecting these fucking dots. But no one's saying these connected dots on the fucking on the news. No, no one. It's Because it's a fucking agenda. It's because they're sheep. They're being told what the to fucking say. It's like me at home. Take the trash out, motherfucker. OK. Do your job. Got it. Okay. You're going to say this. You're going to read the fucking script, exactly what I say, and that's what you're going to do. Okay. Otherwise, get the fuck out. Oh, nope. Kids are in fucking school. I got this. I do that. You're going to take all of the fucking shit off the shelves and make it look like it's empty. Otherwise, you're fired. Okay. They don't give a fuck. No. They're just putting shit in the agenda. It's the clickbait, dude. Yeah, it's big. That's what it is. Mm Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? I don't know. I removed the news from my life, so. I don't, I don't really, uh, no, I don't watch much news myself. We don't have cable at the house. It was the best thing that ever fucking happened to me. <laughs> it really is. Because, like, we, we, were the, we were the couple that, when you're home, you just keep the TV on background noise. Yeah. Just keep the TV on background noise. Yeah. I don't do that anymore. It's nope. the best thing ever. Nope. I don't know current events. The coronavirus is just, now that's. All over social media. No, so Bob's really it. bad at politics. Yeah. And uh, sports. Yeah, you don't really keep up with it. You're just in your own world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I find it important. To, I keep up with politics because it's always been in my family. But uh, yeah, just 
my dad's owned a business, so he's always into it. I follow it. I know a whole lot about it. I just don't voice my opinion. I will say this. We'll move on from that because it's just depressing. Yeah, it's Monday. It is. I I'm sorry. S- I don't want to talk about it anymore. Oh. But I did. I'll bring. A, I'll talk about one more pol- political thing real quick. Okay. I was by myself on. Uh, I was, when was I watching? I can't remember when I was watching TV. I sit. I don't sleep well at night lately. Hmm. Way too anxious. I, I sleep maybe like three and a half, four hours a night. It's fucking horrible. So anyway, Bill Maher was on HBO, mm-hmm. and it's this fucking, it's crazy liberal, uh, and I mean, it's a, it's a intense show. He always has talking points and brings on guests. He brings on some people from the right, most people are from the left, c- celebrity guests, things like that, uh, political panelists, and uh, the whole Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders thing right now, like, bro, it's a shit, it's a shit storm. It's a fucking nightmare. Do you two follow that shit? What the fuck? You guys don't know anything about politics either? Am I talking to myself here? Anyway, so the liberal, the lib- liberal America have always said that they want diversity. Yes, America is a very diverse place. And they keep saying that they want, like, obviously, diversity within your candidates for president, not old white men. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> and they had everything this year. They had women. They had gay men. They had people from other countries. They had, uh, or, or people from other uh, ethnicities. They had, a, they had the gay dude. Uh, I can't remember. I can't. I don't know how to. I'm gonna. I'd mangle his name. Um, but then they had all kind women: Elizabeth Warren, Tulsi Gabbard, a bunch of different people. And they keep saying about having diverse candidates. Do you know the two people last, standing last in the running? Two old white dudes over the age of 75. <laughs> exactly what they fight against. Yeah. They're like, oh, it shouldn't be old white men. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's two old white guys. Like, they've been in politics for fucking ever. 40-plus years in politics. 100-plus years. 40, <laughs> 40 years in politics. And they're like, we're going to change the country. I'm like, motherfucker, you've been here this whole time. Fuck you done. Nothing. That's tough. I'm ready for, I'm ready for, I'm ready for what's going to occur down the road. Trump's Trump's a fucking savage. I mean, dude just runs a country like a business. Some people like him, some people don't. What are you gonna do? I like him. I like him. He's an asshole. I like his tweets. But I'm an asshole. I think they're hilarious. He don't give a fuck. No. Like legitimately does not fucking care. He has one he has like one focus. No, he doesn't have one focus. He has multiple because he's like, the American people and our economy has never been better. Unemployment is out of control. Everything in our local, our local area is, hasn't been better. No. It's phenomenal. So if it's happening in small town fucking America like this, it's happening everywhere. And sure, there's going to be problems and everything isn't always hunky-dory. But um, he just, the economy's doing really well. Jobs. Everybody has opportunity. That's what I see. People drive way more cars now. I see way more new cars on the road. New houses getting sold. People doing better. Country's doing very good. He just just might say some shit like you shouldn't say. <laughs> like when he starts making fun of other candidates, I'm like, oh, dude, don't give a fuck. I just love the nicknames he has for everyone. Yes, everybody has a nickname. They're not overly insulting, just a little... And he might have the same nickname for like four different people. <laughs> and I just I mean, love that he thinks it's relevant to say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a riot. Dude's, dude's a riot. I'd love to meet him. Yeah, I would too. I think that he is, the reason that I think he does so well, and the reason that, I mean, I like him, is because I think he's that guy. I think he's always that guy. Mm-hmm. I think that whether you talk to him in private or in public or whatever, he's going to call him Mini Mike, Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> like, he's going to make fun of him. Yeah. They're, those two, both from New York, both are billionaires. You know they've sitting across the table from each other and fucked each other up on business deals. Yeah. Like, they're, they're both in New York and both were business, big-time business. Of course. So, of course, like, he definitely has shit on Donald Trump, and Donald Trump definitely has shit on him. There's so many things that they can't say about each other, it's not even funny. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Like, they know so many intimate details of their life that they're like, hey, these wins, 
off the fucking record, okay? All right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call you Mini Mike, you little fuck. <laughs> all right, Donald, you and your ugly fucking hair, you raccoon-looking motherfucker. It's like, all right, good one. Yeah, all right, nice. <laughs> Ready to go? <laughs> like, that's... <laughs> Oh, it's brutal. Like, I could, like, being in politics would be just such dog dick. Because it's just, it's, it, it is, it's politics. Like, every, it's funny because it's like, how do we as people, like, everybody buys into this bullshit? Like, bro, if you do something for 40 years, like, that's a long time. Yeah. And then you're like, I'm going to change this. And it's like, motherfucker, you haven't, I don't know how you haven't, like, done anything great yet. You were the vice president of the world. You were the vice president of the country, most powerful country in the world. God damn. But I don't know. Politics are in everything. Like when bot when politics happen in bodybuilding, like, oh that's that's politics. That's all political. And it's like, oh, then you come to politics when you come to actual politics, it's like actual politics. Yeah. <laughs> that means it's bullshit. That means there's more back deals, there's more money, there's more fucked up, there's more Every, everything is, is – there's so many back-end deals, it's not even funny. Power. Some people don't even want money. They just want the power. Scary. Yeah. Like, and here we are just excited to fucking get a slap on the ass, get your dick sucked. That's why I stay in my world, and dude. Have, and have a fucking I, job to go to. I just stay in my world. Is it not wild? It blows my fucking mind. I just try to stay in control of everything that I can actually stay in control of and – yeah, it's tough to think about because it's so much bigger than everybody thinks it is. Yeah. So much bigger than everybody thinks it is. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. It's going to be a shit show. Bernie. Bernie. Weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> what was that? Who was telling us about uh, the fucking Barry Sanders jersey? Oh, Garth Brooks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Garth Brooks wore a Barry Sanders jersey, yeah. and all of his fans lost their shit because they thought he was, like, a Bernie supporter. And he's like, no, yeah. like, I like Barry Sanders from the Detroit Lions. Yeah. Uh, Ber a Bernie Sanders jersey. Oh, I never even thought of this. Oh, wonder. Yeah, he wore a Barry Sanders jersey. It was Detroit Lions, and his number was 20. So they probably thought it meant, like, Bernie 2020. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Bernie Sanders jersey. You can get it on NFL.com. Oh, shit. No, the the Arnold was this weekend. That was fun. I liked to uh, watch. I watched everything, all the all the competitors. Yeah. Um, uh, as a fan of bodybuilding, um, open-class bodybuilding got to get their shit together. They got to get their shit together. Mm-hmm. There's like uh, there's a very big gap right now. There's only a select few guys that are just fucking that are really good. There's no dominant competitor. There's no one that's dominating the sport. It's like an open. It's like you you go in, you have no clue who's gonna win, which is pretty exciting. But then you see like if I've been following bodybuilding for fucking twenty years, and there was like there's a gap. There's a gap. I, I, William Bonac won. William Bonac's phenomenal. Fucking shredded, diced. I think he's looked better before, um, but he won. Dexter Jackson, who's fucking 50. He's like 50-some years old, I think. I don't know. He might not be. I think he's 49 or some shit. Look that up. But, uh, but yeah, he took second. Dexter Jackson, at his age, I'm sorry, but he should not. He, he looks stupid good. Like, bro, he's phenomenal. Bro, he's 50 I, years old. Anyway. I hurt now. He should not be He should not be winning. I can't believe it's happening. Like, Dexter, I'd probably say Dexter, Dexter will absolutely go down as one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. Mm -hmm. And somehow he still looks better than these fucking young dudes. He, he like, brings better packages. Hey, oh, like, still today. Oh, he took second. Yeah. He deserved second. Yeah. Dexter 100% deserved second. Out of that lineup, for sure. He's just, he's the most consistent motherfucker in the game. He'll go down as one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. I feel like the whole package, the complete bodybuilder look is like not, it's not like occurring. No, it's not. There's like very few people that have the complete, a complete Well, that's what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm bro, I, I watched it. Mm -hmm. I was all for it. I was excited. Like the whole, was in. 
And I'm just like, oh my God, there's so many things. Oh, I feel like I'm bitching today. Fuck. I don't want to bitch today. I want to, I got to stop talking. <laughs> Bro, the fucking camera angles that this show had, whoever was, it, it was not good. It was really fucking bad. Like, man, so they're going to cancel all this shit and then not even have a good feed. Bro, it was really bad. Like, I just want a straight on shot. It's all I want. Yeah. Give me a straight on fucking shot. Because, like, that's how I'm going to judge him. He's showing the judges, posing in front of the judges and to the crowd that wasn't there. <laughs> Bro, the camera angles. Say this was the guy on the stage. You went the camera angle here, right? Straight on. Bro, they'd be like over here and then like, they'd like focus in on his upper back. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And then it'd be down here. And then, it, and then dude would turn around and then they'd show like the top portion of his chest, like right here. And I'm like, back the fucking camera. They did it the whole time. And I'm like, stop switching camera angles. Do you guys not fucking watch bodybuilding? Who the fuck is running this shitty show? You fucking douchebags. Like, how the fuck is a production company that doesn't watch bodybuilding running the fucking production on a bodybuilding show? Mm -hmm. So then I was bitching. I, I'm bitching now. So then I watched Nick Power and Strength. Nick Strength and Power. Yeah, that one. I got mixed up. I watched, I, I cruised through his stuff because he's, he's the guy. Mm -hmm. Reports to all the news. His whole fucking story is him recording it, bitching about the camera angles. Kid was losing it. He's like, and like Nick doesn't swear. Like Nick rarely swears. He's dropping F-bombs. <laughs> he's freaking out. And I'm like, oh man, like he's pissed too. Because as a fan of bodybuilding, like I just want to see the physique straight on. I want my shots. I want to see like... All of it. Well, yeah, because part part of this is g going online, going in these forums, talking with other people about the show, be being there. all excited, right? Can't be there. And then you you can't even you can't even be like, oh, he looked good Bro, because you don't fucking know. It was so bad. Fuck the the production of it, the whole the whole stream. It was really bad. It was not really. It wasn't good. I was I was like I feel like I should start a production company. I feel like we should just have these two fucking dickheads run it. Hey, guys, point the camera directly at the fucking guy on the stage and don't move. Like this one right here. Yeah, yeah, that one right there. Point it right there. Don't move the fucking thing. If he moves to the left a little bit, you move to the left a little bit. Okay? Because <laughs> that's what people want to see. They zoom in super close on something, and I'm like, what the fuck are they showing me? Nothing. Oh, it's I'm, it's like me at gymnastics. That's why I don't go to fucking gymnastics meets anymore. I'm not allowed to go. Yeah. Get all fired up and become an asshole. 9 2? 9 2? That's at least a 9 4 5. What? 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 Were you watching? What the fuck was that? <laughs> Sounds like I've been a judge for 20 years. Fuck you. I've been doing this eight. I'm way better at this. <laughs> Give a fucking five-year-old a nine-two. Bet she stayed on the beam. What are you looking at? You go try that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that fucking Family Guy thing you sent to me, or somebody tagged me in. Oh, the thing on when Quagmire, Quagmire came all like, the way down to bitch and complain. <laughs> yeah. Like he went through the sea of people down the bleachers. Nine-two? And then yeah. she's, like, she's like, Dad, I have another, I have another vault. I, got, I get two turns. Oh, carry on. Okay, <laughs> goes back in the up in the stands and goes. All right, go Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Here I am complaining and bitching about the bodybuilding. I just, I don't know. Like, I, I, I was, I, I was, I'm invested. I was into it. I'm a big fan. I want to watch it. Like there, there was really good competitors. They were really good. Um, there's just no, there's no fucking Dorian Yates. There's no Ronnie Coleman. There's no Jay Cutler. There's no one fucking just coming out and dominating. No Phil Heath. No Kai Green. Bro, I watched a video of Kai Green again. Yeah. <sighs> like from back in the day. That dude was fucking crazy big. Yeah. Crazy. He was insane. Phil Heath just, I, I'm, I just can't believe the state of bodybuilding right now. Open class bodybuilding. Yeah. It's, it needs, it needs some fucking Kuklo, Steve Kuklo. I'm 
I know Steve pretty well. Or back in the day, whenever we competed, he worked with Hani. I did as well. He took fourth. Kuklo took fourth this weekend, I think. Mm -hmm. Huge deal. Um, uh, Sergio. Sergio Oliva, Oliva Jr., which was Sergio Oliva, okay, and Arnold competed against each other mm. back in the day. Yeah. All right? So this was Sergio's son that was competing at the Arnold Classic like 45 years later. So Sergio's dad has passed away. So this, and he won Sergio's phenomenal poser. Crazy great poser. So uh, he won the best poser award this weekend and took fifth place. Dude was on. Nice. On. Phenomenal to see him. So he did well. Um, yeah, really liked seeing him. He's in the shit. He is a 100% competitor. Like, he gets, uh, he gets all fucking tied up with shit. Yeah. He, he'll, he'll read, he reads way too many comments online, too. He gets into arguments and shit with people. Yeah. He gets into it. Um, but, no, it was really cool to see him do well, win the best poser award, apparently. This is the shit that fucking really jerks me off, was the fact that, a, 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 like, a performance like he put on is what people go to see. Mm -hmm. As a fan, that's what you go to see. Like, I watched it online. Cool. It's great. Bro, get goosebumps thinking about it because it was that good. Yeah. If you're there witnessing it, bro, it's like 10 times more intense because you feel like you feel his energy. You see it. Like, I've, I've, I've watched him guest pose at the Pittsburgh. Phenomenal. But, like, when you're there and he's in shape and he's dialed in and showing it off, bro, it's, it's his craft. Mm -hmm. It's his passion. And you see that come out. And that's why you go to these shows, and the Arnold uh, Arnold's ten times better than the Olympia, in my opinion. It just is. The Olympia holds Mr. Olympia, but the Arnold's way cooler show, like overall presence and everything. And then they fucking can't go. You're gonna die. Pretty sure nobody died this weekend. There were still fucking thousands of people there. Those dickheads. Yep. Kirk. Really cheats me off. <laughs> it burns my patch. <laughs> no it was good though a lot of the, uh, uh, the the other competitors uh um uh cedric uh cedric was off a little bit uh he took sixth and then uh max charles fucking monster black dude from new york bro this dude's big big as fuck stupid big uh then uh patrick moore i think he took i think he took ninth He's crazy good physique. I like the way he looks. Patrick Moore took tenth. Took tenth. Um, yeah. Who's who took seventh? Akeem Williams. Oh yeah, Kim Williams. That big son of a bitch. He was Monster. there. He uh, he he just couldn't get. He just wasn't hard enough. He was looking a little looking a little bloated. Not bloated. Uh, a little watery. A little soft from behind. Upper back was pretty soft. Uh, but no, still crazy. He was shredded, in good shape, just a little bit, a little, little off. Um, but it leaves the door open, leaves the door fucking wide open. Like there was nobody. Big Rammy took third. He just looked like himself. Fucking, fucking huge. Three hundred and five fucking pounds on stage. Three hundred and five fucking pounds. Massive dude, but he just can't. He can't put it together enough to take over a top spot and be the guy. Still like him though. I love bodybuilding. I'm in it. I love being a fan of it. Like I, it's I don't know. I, that's it's what attracted me years ago. Whenever I was like, oh, like the top six of every show was huge. Mm -hmm. So it's there. Uh, keep staying on the subject of bodybuilders. There's one dude I'm following. Um, his name's Ryan. I don't know his last name. He uh, he does a lot of strongman stuff. He. Uh, uh, he's, I think he's an affiliate or a sponsor, sponsored by Run Everything, mm -hmm. Robin Dana, mm -hmm. and um, he does a lot of strongman stuff. But he's a dad, really cool dude. Has he does the handlebar mustache? Just oh, okay. Think you know who I he has? It. Fucking crazy big legs, and um, uh, he has a tattoo of like uh, of 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 uh, bullets. Like around a, a his, his quad? Yeah. I know who you mean. So a dude's getting ready for a bodybuilding show again. Yeah. Like, he's like, he, like, said he'd never do it again, uh, but he's doing it. Bro, shred it. 
bro's fucking hard as nails, diced. Because mm. he's got thick, dense muscle from doing powerlifting stuff and uh, strongman stuff. So he's pretty dense. Yeah. But he never really got fat. He's always in good shape. Got a couple of kids. Always with him and his wife. They're, it's, it's cool to watch. I'm, I'm, I like watching stuff. It's always positive and feel good stuff. Um, I just saw he's like four and a half or five weeks out. Mm. I just saw the turn of his page. And he's starting to look at food and he's starting to post like foodie things. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, there it is. He's suffering right now. He is now like jerking off to food. Oh, I can't wait to fucking eat this. <laughs> I know that feeling so well. Like, do you sit down and eat your plain food and watch good food? Oh yeah. And like it, it actually makes it better. <laughs> no, it <laughs> or it doesn't. doesn't. Doesn't at all. Or are you just like, fuck that. Fuck I just know. Oh, no <laughs> way. Like when I, I'm, I'm excited to hear about it. That's why I was always watching the Travel Channel. It's just funny because, like, bro's diced. Glutes are in. Yeah. Skin's pretty tight. Um, you can see him suffering. Like, you don't look like him without suffering. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, I could probably look him up right now and in his stories. There's food. Gonna food. <laughs> there's going to be food. I'm doing it now. Let's see it. <laughs> oh, shit. What's his name? Ryan Teary. Yeah. Yeah. Dude's hard as nails. Great physique. Uh, his handle is R Y Y Y Y A N. There he is. <laughs> just, it says just a hunky firefighter with half a mustache. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Crazy big quads. Oh, hard yeah. as nails. There's, there's a food post. <laughs> is it in his? Is it in his? Oh, yeah. He's. Yep. <laughs> Barbecue. Uh, a burger and fries, <laughs> ice cr three ice cream desserts. <laughs> oh no, oh. he had a cheat meal. Yeah, look at them macros. Holy there shit! There you go, good. He finally he he needed a cheat meal. Oh yeah, he's fucking. This morning he's diced hard as fucking nails. Wild looking legs. Yeah, man. He worked, bro. Dude, dude, dude works out. He works hard. Cool. Yeah, does a lot of stuff with his kids, his wife. Good dude. Seems like a solid guy. Bodybuilding's so fucking hard. Oh, mental. It's fucking mental kick in the dick. Yeah. Fucking intense. Yeah. It's not for... You You have to be zoned the fuck in. You got to be on it. You got to just... you Something... Something inside of you had to be woken up for you to want to do this. Mm -hmm. You don't do things on a whim. There is an, there is an internal driving force that puts you into this fitness journey. Something inside of you is telling you that it wants to come out. And, it, and, it, and when it does come out, it's, uh, you, you can't control it. You have to do it. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why, you know, I don't compete because my heart's not in it. Do I still like it? Yeah. I like working out. I like doing my cardio. But I'm not 100% in simply because I don't, it's not there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing inside of me that's like, like it's like a force that's forcing you to do it and it's like a pat it's your passion you love it like uh or or to for someone to do a show like bro doing a show is fucking insanely hard so there has to be something there's just something in you that like makes you want to go through suffering it's definitely a different level of of whatever that is yeah i don't know what that is because you you can hand me the meal plan you can hand me the workout you can hand me all the shit yeah that made Either got you your pro card, won a big show with, fuck, won a giant show with. Mm -hmm. Bro, it doesn't really matter. None of that really matters. Like, it's what you put into it. Yeah. And, no and one no one thinks about the intensity or the fucking, bro, and, or just lying to yourself. A lot of people lie to themselves and you don't even know because you've just been doing it for so long. Like me. Yeah. Like, I get caught up in thinking I have this great diet and, like, I'm training hard and... You're not. I'm not. <laughs> Oh, my arms aren't grown. Well, Bob, you're not training your arms like you train your back. I was like, train your arms like you train back. Like hard. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that kind of makes sense. They grew. And then they grow. They're like, look, I got arms. Yeah. <gasps> no shit. Yeah, so now take that and put it into every single body part on your body. Mm -hmm. Still hit your cardio. Still do your full-time job. Still do all your shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to have it. You got to want it. You got to have whatever is inside of you, like, forcing you to do this mm -hmm. like 
I, I, I have no clue how to explain it. A lot of parents, whenever they talk to me, they're like, my son's just into it. And I'm like, oh, he got the bug. And they look at me and I'm like, oh, no, it's if, if he's in it, he got the bug. Something inside of him woke up mm-hmm. whenever he saw a picture, whenever he watched a video, whenever he got a result from something, mm-hmm. it woke it up. I had the same feeling when I was young. I was like, uh-uh. I remember I was watching Arnold, Commando. Yeah. You know what's in Commando too? What's that? You know what is also in Commando? A Bronco. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I remember like that was me. Like I watched whenever I watched Commando, I was sitting there and I'm like, I want to look like that. In my Bronco. In my Bronco with a flat top. (laughs) I want to put eye eye black on. And a cigar. And yeah, do cool shit. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on. Oh man, I'm I had such a good one liner plan. I couldn't I couldn't deliver because I forgot the dude's name. (laughs) Oh damn it. Can't do it now. I can't do it. I'm so disappointed in myself. It's all right. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna. I, I can't. I can't go on with this podcast until I fucking find out what the dude's name was. Here we go. I hate when that happens. Oh, I'm. So, I'm so upset with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. The anticipation's killing me. The listeners were really loving this part of the show. I don't give a <laughs> fuck off, Bob. I got to know. <laughs> I got to know it. I think we should start chewing in the mic. You got, you, what, am I, I'm the only one that can talk on here? There's four fucking people in the room. Have a conversation with yourself while I'm figuring out his name. Oh, my God. Bennett. We should, I'm, uh, I'm offended. Ah, damn it. I didn't even find the fucking name. It just popped in. There Bennett. There you go. Uh, uh, here we go. I'm not asking this fucking question. Uh, I was I just gonna be. I was just gonna about. be like, oh, have you ever seen Commando? Yeah. And Bob probably saw it like half. What did you just say? I've seen Commando. You've seen Commando. Yeah. Well, how have you seen? That Commando? looks like your lying face, Shane. Yeah, that- <laughs> that's not my lying face. <laughs> Commando. Commando. Yeah. He's like cool off. <laughs> yeah. He throws Bennett on the on the on the. No, I. I- You've never seen Commando? I've seen it. I can't reference oh. it. This is my bad arm. <laughs> Whenever he's holding the dude over the ledge, white one arm. <laughs> he's holding him up by his leg upside down, trying to get information out of him. You are like 10 years older than this me. This my so. bad arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't God. know that movie. Oh, it's so good. It's awesome. So you saw Commando, Shane, but you didn't see... So have you seen Bloodsport? No. Nope. Jean- Kickboxer? No. Hard Target? Never heard of it. <laughs> what That's about you? M- mandatory movie day. Yeah, I'm going to make you watch all the Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. Order a projector. Yeah. We, we got to watch them all. You'll be doing fucking roundhouse kicks across Jay's face in no time. You were quite the martial artist growing up, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my mom used to think that uh, when I was a little kid, like five years old, I was a fucking mommy's boy. I was a complete fucking shy, like, uh uh-uh. My parents thought I had a social disorder. Mm -hmm. Like five years old, like I couldn't couldn't be separated from my mom. I'd cry at fucking preschool. I just wanted my mom. She made it so nice. My life was awesome. My mom made sure everything was great. I had good food. She told me she loved me. I was special. I was handsome. The whole nine. <laughs> Who the fuck wouldn't? Why would I want to go anywhere else? Yeah. I just want to hang out with my mom. She's telling me all this nice shit about myself. Yeah. Yeah. So they, then like we'd go somewhere. And I'd be like, I'd hang on to my mom's leg and be like right behind her. She'd be like, oh, say hi. I'd be like, no. Oh. <laughs> they thought I had a social disorder and oh. I just like my mom. Yeah. So I see it now because of my kid, of how I raised mine. But they put me in marsh. They put me into uh, karate when I was five, because they were like, "We have to do something with this fucking kid. He won't go anywhere." Mm-hmm. And karate was very individualized. You know, it's about it's structured. They were like, "Let's put him somewhere and have structure." So uh, I went to Tung Sudo, which is more defensive than offensive. Offensive. 
And um, uh, there, I learned structure, discipline, just how it went, and I excelled very quickly and very well. I became pretty fucking good at it. I was flexible. I was just able to do splits. And then, like, I started getting, like, pretty good at it, and then I started watching martial arts movies. Yeah. Like Bruce Lee and Bloodsport and fucking kickboxer and all these things started coming out so i started thinking i could do these things and it turns out i started being able to at like a small level yeah i'd be able to stick my fucking foot directly up in the air like sidekicks yeah like i i just i became good at it just because i be, was able to be very focused and i was sem somewhat athletic like my mom has all kind of cool pictures i won a fucking tournament for uh forms yeah in it i was like i want to say i was like eight Maybe, yeah, like eight years old. They videotape it? No, my dad didn't take the video camera. <laughs> no. He didn't have the shoulder. But anyway, I have the trophy because my mom just cleaned out yeah. all my shit at their house. Bro, it's the nicest trophy I have out of all the bodybuilding trophies. This is the heaviest, the nicest, has real marble and real metal and all the shit and all the bodybuilding ones are plastic. Even the fucking one in there won nationals. That one you bought? Yeah, that one I bought. <laughs> I was like, where'd you buy that thing? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this trophy was third place, and it was a, it was a world tournament. Like people came over from other countries to compete there. I had no fucking clue when I was a little kid. But my mom's like, yeah, she's like, this is probably this is a huge deal. The trophy. Uh, they were all excited, me yeah. winning it and all this. And I'm like, they wanted to keep the trophy like at the at the facility. And my mom's like, no. at the dojo. Yeah, she's like, no. <laughs> no, that's going on the mantle. Yeah, she's all like, right? no, we're taking that home. <laughs> like you're not keeping that fucking thing. Um. But no, I I was actually I was actually really good at it. Uh, just learned structure and then, um, karate. Uh, yeah. What what belt? What belt did you get up to? Uh, red belt with red belt with four stripes. Red belt with four stripes. I was uh, I was like eight months away from being a black belt. And then I just got bored with it hmm. and wanted to wanted to move on. I look back and I'm like, man, why'd you let me quit? Or why the fuck? What would I? I just, I just did. I stopped liking it. I stopped wanting to go. My mom said it was like pulling fucking teeth to get me to go. Mm. I'm like, man, I was being a little bit of a bitch. She's like, you want to do other shit. She's like, you wanted to, you just wanted to go do other stuff. Do you still like feel like you need to use it? Oh like, man, bro, I was actually pretty good at it. Like I was 10 years old, but like eight months away from being a black belt. Like, do you ever catch yourself in forms? Like, no, going through, no, not anymore, uh, not anymore. I still think I can do a flying sidekick. You should show off for Hannah and show her some sidekicks. Well, she's seen the trophy. Yeah, that's what I mean. She asked the questions. You yep. got a floor over there? I know. Bro, there was so I would took the uh I was pretty good at it, so the instructor, we would go to demos. Mm -hmm. All right, we'd go do demos to for the for the company. Yeah. And they'd want us to do this to promote it, get kids into it. We went to Highlands High School, all right? Whitney's husband, John, went to Highlands. Mm -hmm. He was in the crowd whenever we were there performing. <laughs> so there's me, yeah. fucking eight-year-old, in front of high school kids and shit. Performing. Like middle school to high school and all this. <laughs> and uh, so the, uh, the instructor, he's like, because in, in class you'd have to do a flying sidekick to practice because for your one belt you had to break the board to... To, to move on so I was able to jump pretty high and pretty far and he put people in front of me to jump over and he's like hey you're gonna do your flying sidekick for the demo and I'm like cool this is great like I'm all excited and I get there and there's a fucking ton of people in the audience and he's like you're gonna jump over people today and I'm like <laughs> no I'm not no I'm not all of a sudden I get crazy anxiety yeah and my mom's like you can do it I'm like, fuck you, mom. Hug me. Like, I don't want to be here anymore. And uh, he ended up putting like he ended up putting like four or five people, four people down for this one. All right. And I end up fucking jumping over and breaking the board, and everybody's excited. You know, kids like hunkered down in the fetal position to yeah. jump over them. And uh, and I did it. It was cool. It made me feel good. I felt really special. So then we go to uh, we go to another demo. It was for. Uh, Boy Scouts. Mm. So we were at this fire hall doing this thing, and it's, you know, maybe six months later. And he's like, hey, you're going to jump over people again. And I'm like, oh, no. 
what happens if I don't do it? He's like, you're fine. Like, just just do your thing, kid. I do this all the time. Yeah, <laughs> you're good at this. That's why you're here. You're really good at this. And uh, and then he ended up putting six people down. And I'm like losing my shit. I like, I'm like, I'm looking at my mom again. I'm like, mom, save me. Don't let me. Don't let them do this. They're gonna embarrass me if I miss it. She's like, you can do it. I'm like, fuck you, mom. Hug me. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I end up doing it, fucking blowing the shit out of it. Um, and it was exciting, and it always did well, but that's why we went. So it turns out, like, I was good at it, but Whitney was better, mm. my sister. My sister's bad motherfucker. She's tough bitch. She kicked way harder than me. Oh, yeah. Strong as fuck. If yeah. Whitney kicked you in the face, I mean, you're done. I'd feel it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we used to have, we used to, my parents would buy us, uh, like, all the, fucking headgear mm -hmm. sparring gear all the sparring gear yeah. yeah so and my parents had a pretty big living room so when we were kids and we were in the karate like i was a higher rank than she was but she's bigger than me she's like three years older and she's bigger and she's fucking stronger bitch had some legs on her so we'd be sparring and whitney would just wind up and fucking crack me like right in the ribs like oh go down and sure enough she'd crack me right in the fucking head because we had pads on the gloves yeah. pads on the head and she just like it was mma yeah. that's what we were doing yeah and uh like in the living room move the couches apart and everything and then um i'd like I'd, I'd make noises but i'd never cry because i knew if i cried like my mom would come in and make a stop mm -hmm. so i didn't want that to happen so we go back and forth and i maybe won like one time my whole life fucking beat the shit out of me <laughs> brutal <laughs> my mom my dad bought his slingshots one time okay bought his slingshots like the good ones the good ones the yeah. one that kill birds yeah okay? love those. and uh my dad said you can shoot stuff just don't kill anything I'm like okay so we're fucking around in the living room the one day it was cold out it was in the winter time whitney decided she's like let's shoot m&ms at each other with the slingshot i'm like yeah and she's like i'll go first and I'm like, I'm going to go next. She's like, yeah. So she's like, here, I'm going to shoot you in the ass with M&Ms. And I'm like, okay. She convinced me and thought it was a good idea. She fucking pelted me and left like quarter size welt on my ass. I screamed and I was crying like a bitch. My mom comes in screaming. What the fuck are you doing? Sure enough, she's like, she's like, did you break his skin? Nope. Just fucking quarter size weld on my All right, ass. Give me the slingshots. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> she came on. My dad's the one that caught the most shit from yeah. it. God damn, I told you kids. Greg, why would you give them these slingshots? <laughs> they're, they're cool. I never I just wanted to buy them a gift. <laughs> Can't do anything. Oh man. Yeah, she tortured me. She also used to uh um uh Whitney is very dark. She likes horror flicks. She likes that, and she likes, like, torturing you. Hmm. Not in, like, a, a bad way, but in a way that would make me feel like shit or vomit. Hmm. So Whitney found out that I had this, like, problem with, like, boogers. I don't <laughs> like boogers. Okay. okay. I don't like them. I don't like boogers and snot. It's disgusting. All right? She, I'm like getting sick to my stomach telling this fucking story, but it's hilarious. She would make sure like whenever she felt like fucking with me, because I'm the little brother, okay? She kicks my ass in karate. She shoots me with fucking M&Ms. She beats me up. She's stronger. She's bigger. The whole thing. She used to be, pretend and tell me that I would eat boogers. She's like, you love eating boogers. She's like a big old snot can boogers. I'm getting sick. Oh. Okay, she'd tell me this shit like she'd like I'd run away and she'd run because she's running. She can run faster than me. Mm -hmm. So I could not run from her. I could not get away from this fucking bitch. And she'd tell me and talk to me about eating boogers and cans of snot. Okay. Yeah. And tell like not stop until I'd puke. Like she'd tell me over and over like, oh, you love it. Like in my ear, like hold me down. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and she'd keep going until I'd vomit. I'd vomit in the house. I'd vomit outside. My mom would get so fucking mad at her. She'd be like, wait, hey, what are you doing to him? And she'd Stop just, making him throw up. <laughs> she'd just fucking laugh at him. She'd just make fun of me. So Whitney was brutal to me, and she'd do it. She might have did it like once a week. 
And then she'd get grounded. And then guess what? Next week, making Seth puke again. You you got ferocious were wild. Bro, there was four of us growing up. There was four people. We didn't do these things at my house. It's because there was only two of you. And Whitney, have you met my sister? I met her, yeah. She's a fucking animal, dude. So, like, growing up, it was just a free-for-all of her just beating. Because we, I, you know, we were in karate. So, here, put the gloves on. Like, don't hurt each other. Okay. Whack. Oh. Fucking. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, but she loved torturing me. She'd tell me these, she'd do that to me. She also would put me in leg locks. Like we'd be fucking fighting, you know, have the gloves on. Then it'd get, it'd start getting rough. Like if I started doing better and I'd like tag her a couple times, all of a sudden she'd be like, fuck you, dude, I'm fucking you up. She'd tackle me and then she'd wrap her legs around my stomach and then squeeze the fuck out of me. I'd vomit lunch up. I puked inside my house at least 20 times as a kid. Oh, yeah. Ask. Oh, my God. Whitney. Between being overly anxious about stuff, Whitney telling you about boogers, forcing it out of you. (laughs) Yeah, dude. There's. I'd probably say there's at least three times that I can recall of her squeezing me so hard that, like, either uh, either SpaghettiOs or Oodles and Noodles have come up for sure. Ramen noodles, that was like a staple in the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she'd squeeze hot dogs. Oh, yeah, she'd fucking squeeze the shit out of me. Oh, yeah, she was a tough bitch, dude. Still is. If she punched me, it still hurt. <laughs> I'm the oldest, so I, I gave my siblings all the shit. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Especially when my sister was young. Mm-hmm. You could just stare at her and make her scream. Oh, really? Like, Stop looking at me. And you just keep looking at her. Stop looking at me. Or like I'd knock all of her shit over, all of her Barbie stuff. Like have everything laid up for like a dinner, a Barbie dinner. And I just like knock it all over. Oh, dude. Mom be screaming, running at me. Jake did Jake did more of that, yeah. My mom would beat my ass. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. My mom, Well, yeah, my dad was never home. He worked 16-hour yeah. days. So it was my mom at home with us and... Yeah, she'd ha- she'd have to she'd have to physically touch me to like get my attention, like sh- like knock it the fuck off. Yeah, I still got a scar on my leg because like she was after me, and I like <laughs> ran away, and she like like gouged my leg. <laughs> Come here, you little fucker. Yeah, exactly. And I got away. You don't run into the house if you if you have to run, you run out of the house. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I made that mistake. Yeah. She'd always corner me. Yep. <laughs> I was a bastard to live with, dude. I was not a like I was a a great kid to other parents oh, and like yeah. at school and like all the shit. And then I was just an asshole at home. We're very respectable outside of our house, but when we were in in the house, Whitney, you couldn't hit Whitney Mm-mm. too fast. No, oh. it just didn't fucking hurt. Oh. <laughs> you couldn't beat I'm, Whitney. I'm gonna hit her when I see her at the warehouse. Oh, go ahead, dude. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Fuck you up. I feel like she's going to know I'm coming. Yeah. Or just respond. Fuck you up. Yeah, I'm going to get a counter that I didn't expect. Yeah, she's fast as fuck. Oh, dude, my family is full of fucking... We are very genetically gifted people. Whitney, whenever she whenever she trained hard and worked out, or that bitch was... She was doing 185 on incline for sets. She's a strong bitch. It's a big weight. Fuck yeah, and she's fast. Yeah, like you could. My mom only beat me, beat me and Jake, and it made me cry because I love my mom. Yeah, I was more emotional. Like, mom saved me. It was like beating me emotionally. Yeah, it didn't hurt. And then she's like, I'm so upset. She's like, you started it. You shouldn't have did that to her. I'm like, I didn't do anything. She started it. Whitney was smarter than me and stronger than me. And <laughs> my little brother thinks he's the favorite. He is it's such a joke. No, he's not. <laughs> Definitely not. I am the favorite. You're full of shit. I am definitely the favorite. Maybe you were at one point. I'm definitely the favorite over Brooke, my middle sister. Oh, she's uh, the middle child. Yeah, she's the middle. All the middle child children get shit on. Yeah, my my younger brother, though, he's like, mom definitely likes me more. (laughs) She's like, she buys me like this stuff. I'm like, yeah, I already got that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Listen to you. (laughs) Yeah, Emmy's about to become the middle child. Mm-hmm. She knows it's coming. She has this feeling. She pissed off. Oh, she fucking. <laughs> so uh, Jake was the baby. 
Mm-hmm. And he and we always say that Jake's the favorite of the family, just being jokes, you know. Um, but Emmy. So it's Jake, you. It goes, my mom, uh, Whitney, Amanda is my oldest sister. Yep. And then after Amanda, my mom, my, they were, my parents were pregnant five times. Mm-hmm. Uh, it went Amanda, and then my mom had a stillborn, mm-hmm. Nicholas. He died at birth. Like, she carried him nine months, yeah. then died at birth. And then after that was Whitney, and then me, and then Jake. What's the age difference there? There's three, there's like two to two and a half years between all of us. Okay. Uh, the distance between Amanda and Jake is nine years, hmm. a little over nine years. Yeah, so uh, Whitney and I, I believe, are the closest. No, Whitney and I and Jake and I are... Or we're about equal, about two and a half years apart. Um, but, yeah. Wild family. Yep. Fucking. Like, were family vacations mayhem? <sighs> oh, my God. Or was it like, oh, nice day on the beach? No. Frosties. No, fucking no. mayhem. Yeah. All right. <laughs> family dynamics. I never really heard a family vacation story. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> My sister Amanda is the outcast. My sister Amanda is smart enough to be a lawyer. The bitch can read and just retain shit. Mm-hmm. She can read like a 500-page book in a day. Remember the whole fucking thing. Yeah. She's just a bitch. <laughs> just a fucking <laughs> stubborn fucking bitch. Like, she knows it, too. So she just made everything living hell. She was the one that just wanted to read, was in her own world. She was the first kid that just, she just liked her ways. And she is in her ways. Stubborn. My family is known for being very stubborn. And uh, so Amanda was just, she didn't want to do anything. Wherever she, wherever we would go as a family, she just wanted to fuck it up somehow. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, these are th- I don't remember these things. This is just what I'm told. And Amanda admits to yeah. these things as well. So I'm not harping on her. Yeah. She knows she was a bitch. Like when I tell these stories... Everybody that knows Amanda is like, oh, there's no way she's like that. And I'm like, oh, no, she's bitch. <laughs> she's bitch. And they're like, oh, she's so sweet and, like, loves the kids. And, you know, she's the big cuddly aunt that buys shit and all this. Mm-mm. Nope. She was a kid. It was horrible. <laughs> Just a <laughs> oh, was, uh, And then Whitney. Whitney was the tough one. Whitney was the tough one. You didn't. She's just tough. Like, I've been talking about her the whole time. She was just fucking on it she's mean she was athletic she could run fast she could hit you hard really intense me i was a little bit of the mama's boy i was just always shy i like my mom she dresses me i have anxiety from going to school i just want to stay with my mom i don't want to go to school i used to have school anxiety fucking puke before school (laughs) or throw up oh bro (laughs) i puked more as a kid than i did as a college student (laughs) wow (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) Uh, and Jake was the baby of the family. He was another stubborn one. My mom calls him the bull. He's a Taurus, just fucking stubborn. Jake was <laughs> cute as a button, curly black hair, fucking didn't want to do shit. Just wanted to do whatever he wanted. Um, but yeah, family vacations were a riot because there was six of us going everywhere. And somebody would always want something different, bitch about something. And then as we got older, you know, whenever we got, you know, we were teenagers and stuff and we'd go somewhere, it'd be like fucking mayhem. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be trying to fuck my sister's friends. It never worked. <laughs> <laughs> never. Get out of here, Seth. <laughs> Seth, get the fuck out of here. Just wanted to see tips. What's up? <laughs> hey. No, I was, you doing? I was not smooth at all. <laughs> I was fucking horrible. Hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I didn't know if a boob was going to pop out in here or not. Any boobs in here? No. All right. All right. I guess I'm going to see you later. (laughs) Well. (laughs) Yep. Oh, yeah. I think all the the family vacation dynamics are pretty much the same. Yeah. (laughs) Family to family. Well, I think it's too much fun. I look back at it now and I think of how. Always one kid that doesn't want to be there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be on vacation? The fuck Shut up. Yeah. Stay in the room. That was Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> Never would. Nope. Uh, my dad, he'd always, my dad would always, as we got older, there was always a day where he got a little too fucked up. Yeah. Like he'd just, he'd start drinking early in the day, 
just he's finally like he, I look at myself as very similar to my dad, and like whenever I go on vacation, it takes me a day or two to like unwind from my daily activities. Like being away from work freaks me out. Mm-hmm. Oh, they need me. I'm not. I won't, this won't be able to work without this. No, it's fine. You can relax for seven fucking days. It's okay. So it'd be a couple days in, and then my dad, he'd get all tuned up one day, and then like out in the sun all fucking day, playing with us, having fun, carrying on, not eating anywhere nearly enough and drinking way too much. By the time it's time to go out for dinner, my dad's fucking sunburnt as shit, yeah. half kicked in the ass. And my mom's like, we're just going to eat pizza tonight. I'm like, oh, okay, dad's too fucked up, huh? She's like, yeah, dad, dad's sleeping. I'm like, okay, <laughs> we're going to go down and fucking, we're going to go down to the beach. <laughs> He'd wake up next day, the rejuvenator ready to go burn his shit. Have to put a ton of sunscreen on and stay under the umbrella. <laughs> yeah. Come strolling on the beach. Man, how about yesterday, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. My mom would always bitch at him about burning his feet. Greg, put sunscreen on your feet. I did. Put more on. Yep. I'm notorious for burning my feet. Oh. And the tops of the, my legs. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They're white as a ghost. <laughs> Fucking Hannah, when we went to Orlando, did I tell, 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 tell everybody about that? Hmm. No. We went to Orlando for the gymnastics meet. Yeah. She didn't wear sunscreen to, on the one day. Hmm. We're there for a day. She had one day out in the sun. One day. Hannah's a ginger. Mm-hmm. She has red hair, pale skin. I'm like, hey, put sunscreen on. She's like, no, it'll be good. It'll be good. I'm like, no. She's like, it's not that sunny out today. It's I'm Florida. Like, I'm like, we're in Florida. And you haven't seen the sun in six fucking months. The sunshine state. <laughs> Florida. Legit. The sunshine state. That is right. It is. I think that's right, Shane. That's right. It was I on know. a license plate. I saw it. But anyway, she doesn't put fun fucking sunscreen on for like three hours. And I'm like, hey, you're starting to get really fucking red. I was like, I don't want to hear one peep out of your fucking mouth whenever you go home and you are cooked to the fucking tea. Sure enough, she's like, I think I need to put sunscreen on. Yes, put it on there. Mm-mm. Sunscreen ain't going to help too much. Too late. You're, you're already done. Too late. Bro, we're like four and a half hours into the day, and the, there's a lady that looks at her, and she says, sweetheart, I think you need to put sunscreen on right now. And I'm like, there you go. Like a complete stranger. Yeah. So our, sure enough, Hannah was fucking red for like a week. To this day... She was on her feet all weekend. Last night, I was rubbing her feet. Tops of her feet are still peeling. <laughs> it's fucking like three weeks, dude. I was going to say, yeah. one day in the sun, three weeks later. Bro, it's still peeling. <laughs> yep. Such a dick. One year, I was at an Ocean City with my buddy and his family. Uh-huh. Really good family. Love them. Uh, but all week, they were asking me, hey, Bob, you need, you need sunscreen. You need sunblock. No, I'm good. Every day, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So this is like day three now, or day four, and I I wake up, like, because we were drinking and stuff, so, like, you don't really feel any of the aftermath till the next day, and I come out without my shirt on, bro, I'm, like, purple. No. Like, there's spots that are so fucking bad, like, you couldn't touch it, like, it was so bad. And my buddy's dad looks at me, and he's like... You good on sunscreen, Bob? I'm like, I'm good. He starts laughing. He's like, bro, he's like, you're not even allowed in the sun today. No. He's like, you're sitting under the fucking tent or under the umbrella, t-shirt on, grease up. Oh, boy. But that was the joke all week. Bob, you good? (laughs) Yeah, I'm good. I'm good on the sunscreen. (laughs) You fucking asshole. Worst fucking sunburn I've ever had. Oh, man. It was brutal. It's crazy. Peeling for weeks. My nose gets it. Oh, really? Like Rudolph. Yeah, yep. I just turn different shades of red. I don't tan. I'm good. Once I get like my base, I look like I I get dark. Nope. Like a, like a Spaniard. Ah, like you could fucking do do the bull stuff, huh? Yeah, I think so. I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he has just the mustache. Ah, That's right. Spaniard. I see quite a few people rocking the Bob stash on the internet. Oh. Some women like it. You can tickle them. Get in there. <laughs> All up in that. <laughs> uh, Adeline, Adeline tans. Yeah. She doesn't burn. She's, 
She used a little bit of sunscreen. I make her go on it just because, you know, sun's bad sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hurt her. I took them on a nature walk yesterday. Hey, uh, the, the window's open. We didn't tell anybody this whole fucking time. Yeah, window's open. If this open. video's all fucking blown out, it's all Jay and Shane's fault because they don't know how to do their job. I just want to look out the window. Look, it's sunny out and shit. It's fucking 64 degrees today. Spring is here. I love it. Longer days. Fucking, look, what, what, is it daylight savings time? Is that what this is? Or... Is it no longer daylight savings? Yeah, well, how or does that no go? No longer daylight savings. Cause Jay knows this. Or... You're a meteorologist. I it started. Huh? I thought it started now. What, what happens? What is it called whenever this occurs? Like, we turn the clocks ahead. What's it called? No, well, we turned them back. No, we turned them ahead. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fall back. How Spring high were forward. you on Saturday? Pretty high. Okay, then. Shh. I love that the iPhone takes care of me on like changing the time. Oh, Thank yeah. God. I woke up. I was like, I want to oh. know what time it is. Oh. Is it called daylight savings time still? Yes, and it has officially begun on March eighth. Uh, ah, yeah. so it's just begun. It moves it forward, so we have longer days. It stays out, stays sunnier, longer. I love that shit. Wow, straight through till November. Yep, I'll take it. I like turning the clocks ahead. Anyway. It's sunny out. It is. We open the window. If we're a little blown out on the camera, it's all Jay and Shane's Jane, fault. Jay and Shane. Yep, send them a message. Tell them they suck at their job. <laughs> Everybody's going to search just to They're pay. like, fuck, dude. We hear that enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like hearing it from, from the fans, too. It'll be good. Uh, no, I'm, I, I'm, I am a morning guy. This... I love all the all four seasons here in Western PA, but I forget how much I love working outside in the spring and in the summer. Well, we I fucking love it. We haven't had much of a winter here. Fuck no. So it, I mean, now I'm ready for summer. Yeah. Now I'm just ready. Yeah. I, I love the snow. I don't mind it. But we just haven't got. We didn't get any all winter. It was rain and fucking forties. Mm -mm. Property looks like shit. I know it's bad. I got, I got so much shit to take care of. I got a bit overwhelmed yesterday, like, riding around the property because there's so many projects I want to do. I'm like, all right, pick one. Pick one achievable task first, okay? <laughs> I took the kids through the woods. Mm -hmm. It was pretty fun. Like, they got home. They got home from the meet. <clears throat> I had just gotten home myself, and uh, uh, we got something light to eat, and then we just went walking in the woods, just took them through everywhere because there's. I got to build a bridge in two spots to be able to take the quad trails all the way out through all the properties. And uh, they loved it. We found fucking deer heads. We found deer skulls. We found, showed them a ton of deer shit everywhere, deer tracks, all the stuff. It was fun showing them. I, I did it with Emmy a couple times, but now she's old enough to, like, really be into it. Mm -hmm. And then Adeline's, like, she was just amazed. I'm like, yeah, we come, you come outside. We'll do shit again. So I got to get it. I got to fucking make a spot for a pool. That's one thing I got to figure out where I want to put it because now property's all fucked up. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to put my pool where my garage has got to go now and where I got where my garage was supposed to go. I can't put it there. There's a natural spring that runs through my property. Yeah. So I can't put my garage where I wanted to. So now I have to move the garage because I don't want to build over that spring. Mm -hmm. And I got to find a place for the pool. And Adeline wants a trampoline. So I got to get a trampoline. Yeah. And I got to find out where I want to put the fucking pool. Because I'll have to move. I'll have, I'll have a good bit of work to do to put the pool there and then build the garage. Because I want the garage to go up pretty soon. Yep. I just want my driveway done. I got to do that, too. She wants a basketball hoop. Hmm. Yeah. That'd be Shoot fun. Hoops. Yeah. So I'm going to just do the bottom portion of my house, bottom portion of the driveway, mm -hmm. the flat spot. Because my driveway is huge. It's like fucking, I don't know how long that thing is. Like an eighth, eighth of a mile, mile. Mm -hmm. yeah, probably, probably something like that. Down into the valley, put that there. Shoot hoops. Mm -hmm. I know where I want to put uh, the gun range on my property now. Oh, I just figured it out. Yeah, there's this one area that if we like dig out the hillside a little bit, we'll have a nice, nice oh, really? area to shoot into. Uh. Yeah, without it, without any, anything grazing up over the property line. Just horses good. back there. Got to be careful. <laughs> I'm not shooting that direction. I want to shoot oh, no. towards the horses. No, listen, like th there's no way you could shoot a horse from where, <laughs> from where this is at. There's, oh, no. No, there's no way. 
It would have to go through like 200 yards of dirt. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, as long as it's It's like where that big hill is. Like we, down here on the lower end, you can shoot right into it. Oh, uh, okay. Right in there. Right. Right in there. Fucking guy. Fucking jerk off. Oh, uh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Nope, it was a good weekend. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very busy. My Sundays fly by. Because, like, my Saturday... No, my Sundays fly by. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know what it is. I just get, like... I try to do so much, and then before I know it's 7 o'clock at night, and... Mm-hmm. All my days run together. Mm-hmm. The only thing that really separates my days is the work, but this weekend was work weekend, and then yesterday I spent a lot of time there. Mm-hmm. I need to uh, I need to be more productive at home, though. I'm not productive enough at my house. I still have work on my mind, and yesterday whenever I was doing things and, like, I'd get sidetracked, I'd be like, holy fuck, I got sidetracked like eight times today. Mm -hmm. If I'd stop fucking around and just do what I got to do, I'd be so much more productive. Yeah. Got to be more productive. Yeah, I spent a lot of time thinking about doing stuff and <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> That's what I did yesterday. I was like, I'm like doing something and then I get sidetracked. And then it's just, I'm, you're right, I, I, way too overwhelmed with shit. Mm -hmm. Way too overwhelmed. Yeah, I need to just pick a project and... What about you, Shane? What'd you do this weekend? I watched the fights on Saturday night. Oh, that's a topic. Let's go through that. People were fucking pissed. That's what I heard. I didn't about watch that him. Adesanya Romero fight. Yes. It was, in my eyes, Romero's fault. If you are fighting for the belt, you need to show that you want to fight for the belt. I watched part of it. It looked like a joke. It was bad. First two and a half minutes, Romero stood there with his hands up. Waiting for Sonya to attack. I'm like, Sonya's not going to attack you. Like, you need to go. You need to fight. Like, why are you standing there? Why would he do such a it thing? It was ridiculous. I, I was like, oh, is this a strat? Like, is this strategy for setting up the rounds? Is that where he, like, stood in the... Yes, literally like that. And didn't do anything. It, the crowd was booing. And he still didn't do anything. Oh, he didn't do anything. The fifth round, he picked it up. Still didn't do anything. Really? Yeah, Adesanya picked apart his leg. Like, his leg was yeah, I saw pretty that. bad. Um, but you know, he just what? lost a ton of respect. Uh, Dana White said that was his last shot for for gold. Like, why are you going to do that? Like, last shot. You, yeah, that was. He's forty two years old. and He's in really good shape. Yes, but you can't fight more for the belt. Well, you like were that. fighting for the belt. Why wouldn't Why wouldn't he do that? I don't know. And Dana White was almost saying like that they should have waited for Apollo Costa. Like oh, that he, was that bad that you should have waited. Oh yeah. boy, Dana. That was it's. Other fighters have to be pissed, yeah. too, because that set a precedent so, for other stuff as well. There were so many fighters in attendance, too. Like, uh, Paulo Costa got in a fight, actually, with uh, – or not in a fight, but he was shouting at the cage. They had to escort him off. Yeah. Korean Zombie and Brian Ortega got in a little I argument. I heard they slapped each other or some yep. shit. It was, it was awesome. Mm. That's why I want to be there for that. Mm, Shane wants to get in there. Shane's like, it. slap me, slap me. <laughs> Boom, down. Oh, oh. <laughs> I just want to witness it. I'll videotape it. There you go. See? It. Yeah, I didn't watch him. I, I, I fucking passed out. <laughs> How about the girl that got kicked in? Get, get that got the, the fucking hematomas on her head, bro. That was the best fight I've ever seen. I'm pissed that that's that's what I missed. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody was saying that's one of the best fights, woman or women, woman or man, one of the best fights they've seen. Like they've left it out there. Yeah, that's the good shit. That's what you pay for, dude. That's, I was waiting for someone to drop. Just they didn't, to, though. No, they they swung the whole time. I was like, how long are they keeping this up? It that, was ridiculous. That girl, like, I, I was watching clips of it with the, I, can't, I don't know I don't know their names. Oh, uh, Wei Li and uh, Yuana Jin Jacobs. Yeah, yep. JJ. Yep. She touched her head and was like, oh, boy. Like, felt the hematomas on her head. Bro, I had a goose egg whenever I uh, got into a car accident years ago. I had a goose egg. Bro, it was fucking, like, this far off my forehead. It was, like, that big, like, right there on the side, okay? Her whole fucking head was that. Her forehead Did almost went Did you see the pictures? Past. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw they were making some fucked up memes. Megamind? Yeah. 
<laughs> all that. Like she's a pretty wo- she's a pretty woman. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you're like, good lord, what? Oh my god. Like I don't know, I don't know the what, what happens to her afterwards. But I showed Hannah, and she's like, "Is she like okay? Is she gonna be okay?" She went to the hospital, got discharged. Nothing was wrong. Okay, good. And then the other, they, I did. The other woman is uh, what is she Chinese? Yes. And uh, so like, like her eyes were swollen shut, mm-hmm. and I didn't know how bad it was, and I didn't know what she looked like previously. They showed the before and after of her. Holy fuck, was her fucking head fucked up, too. Mm -hmm. Like, her face was swollen as shit. Like, fucking stupid swollen. Yeah. Big face. Fucking massive. Oh, yeah. The fight was so good. I mean, you couldn't go wrong. It was a split decision. I think JJ won. That's what... But they uh, gave it to the champ. Yeah, they gave... McGregor was... He said they got it wrong. Yeah, I think they got it wrong, too, but... It could have went either way. Man, fucking fighting is nuts. Yeah. Isn't it? That whole card was good. What was the knockout? That, that Rogan and DC freak oh out. Oh my about. gosh! Yeah, so that reaction. Like, I so, didn't see uh, it. Like it's nowhere on the internet right Jerk- now. Jakar Close versus uh, Dariush. Yeah. Um, they were both swinging, but Close had him like stumbling, like knocking around or walking around, like just dazed. Then uh, Dariush hit him with uh, hit him with a right, I think. Stumbled him, and they were just going back and forth. It was nuts, and then finally just knocked them out. It One, was the craziest sequence ever. Uh, it was like a thirty-second thing. I didn't. It's. It's. They're showing. They're not showing it on on anywhere right now. I no. couldn't find it. I couldn't find no, that knockout because it was a main card fight. They wouldn't show it. You see the little bits from the 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 JJ fight, but not yeah. not that one. Yeah, I'm trying. I was trying to. I'm, I was best. It was. If I was close, I'd be like, "What just happened to me?" I was winning. <laughs> I mean, oh, dude, it really? was nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. His, he got knocked out. He was staring in one place and just fell over. Oh, man. Yeah, it was that bad. But that's what they were freaking out about. Oh, man. It gave me the chills. It was crazy. When are they going to do like a co-ed fight? <laughs> they do. It's with the transgenders. Hmm. That actually happened once. Hmm. Fucking transgender man to woman fought a woman. Beat the fuck out of her. It was fucked up. I didn't know. I know. <laughs> put I mean, like a like a non transgender, just like, male versus woman. I wonder how that's gonna go. I don't know. I think Bullet Valentina could take somebody. Ah, <sighs> she's a badass. She's tough, but she's listen. I I don't um. <laughs> she could probably beat like you up and me up. Yes, she'd fuck me up. But like. Henry Cejudo, what is he, like 127 pounds? That dude's a monster. Henry Cejudo is a fucking animal, dude. Yep. I, I think, is, he, is it 125 or 135 he fights at? He fights at a different, I think he holds like two titles right oh, now. Oh, that's so right. He, holds he goes two. up he, and down. He goes. He holds the fly and the, the welter and the fly or the lightweight and the fly. Uh, I don't remember. Anyways. But he wants to go up. Anyways, he has two. He wants to be the champ, champ, champ. <laughs> he wants to fight Volkanovski. He won't get that fight until Max Holloway does. Max Holloway will get the rematch first. I don't think Cejudo should fight Volkanovski. No, that dude's that dude's unreal. Yeah, no. But, but anyway, yeah. Henry Cejudo is like the littlest guy in MMA. And uh, Shevchenko, is that how yep. you say her name? Yeah. She's the baddest bitch, and she's, I think, the same weight or maybe a little bigger than him. Mm-hmm. He would fucking ruin her. I think they had a little thing going online, didn't weren't they? I don't remember. I think they had they someone on Twitter where like he was like, I'll like she she said she wanted to fight him or he called her out or some shit like that. Back and forth. And I'm like, Oh man, man's always gonna they're just we're just stronger. We're we're bigger and stronger than fucking women. We were built to do such. Fuck 'em up. I mean, Whitney used to kick my ass as a kid, though. We just got done talking about it. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> She's a fucking tough bitch, dude. But the thing is, it's like, you know, if you train to be a fighter, you're a fucking fighter. Mm-hmm. Fight, fighting is nasty. It's fucking unreal. Like, you're legitimately fucking fighting each other. Like, it, I've been in a few fights. I've gotten punched in the fucking head a number of times. I've punched other people in the fucking head. Like, it's not like, oh, I can't wait for it to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> These motherfuckers are like, I can't wait for it to happen again. And I'm like, oh, boy. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah there's there's going to be so many good fights this year. Like, they just announced, uh, well, Wilder Fury, middle of July. I, think yeah. we do, I don't know if we talked about that last podcast. 
But then the um, Paulo Costa and uh, Adesanya already set it up. That's I think that's that's June. That's June or July. I thought it was end of June, end of July. Yeah, yeah. I'll take I'll take Fury again. Yes. I don't think he, I don't think Wilder's going to be able to beat him. No. I think it's really bad idea that Wilder wants to fight him again. I think Wilder just needs to slow the fucking brakes and go learn how to box. Because Fury's going to fuck him up again. Somebody said something to me about Wilder going to the UFC after. And I was like, you are insane. That dude, yeah, he's 6'7 and stuff. But you, dude, you need to learn how to fight. You can't just box. Bro, go fight John Jones. You Good luck. Ruined. That dude will, go fight Stipe. Bro, no. Just because you can knock people out and like he's a bad motherfucker. But boxing and MMA are completely different. Like Khabib is Khabib's fucking scary. Like yeah. I was watching, I was watching him wrestle people. Like I was, I, I got into it when I was taking a shit the other day, bro. This dude just mauls people in wrestling. Like he has no off switch, and that's why him and when him and Ferguson fights gonna be scary. See him like, kick the belt. Yeah, it was awesome. Oh yeah, I, I did fucking see get that. that off of here. Khabib, was, he, you know what he said to him when he kicked it? No, he was like, "This belt is as fake as you are." <sighs> Ferguson's fucking crazy. Tony, Tony, Tony could have his fucking head split wide open and just not stop. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy fight. When's that? Uh, April, April 18th. 18th? Mm -hmm. Yeah, weekend after Easter. Yeah. 420 month. Yeah, month of 420, Bob. I don't think there'll be a day. There's not a day that goes by that you're not. Tuned up. Tuned up. How about everybody busting my balls about being tuned up? <laughs> what a my IG story. <laughs> yeah. You were pretty amazed at that Bananas Foster. I love that shit. <laughs> I was like, how does he not cook anything else? He's like, oh, my God. And, cat. like, it doesn't go anywhere. I'm like, God, oh, it's cool. Flames. I was pretty, yeah, I was, I was, yeah. Tuned up. Yeah, I have a few drinks in the beginning. And then stop, like, before the main course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just a little stoned up. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're there for quite a few hours, so. I think we were there for five. I never noticed the rest of the restaurant leaving. Where, do, do you? <laughs> we got and there. I'm like, at, oh my god! We got there at like seven, and by eleven thirty, nobody else was there. We were the only ones there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this party really died. <laughs> got to see. Uh, got to see some big fans. Oh uh, yeah, there was there was a couple fans there when we walked in. Yeah, I I uh, I walked in and. Um, I saw the I saw the wife like look at me and make eye contact. I'm like, they might know me. <laughs> and then she fucking slapped her husband, like hit him. Like, hey. And she's like, hey. And he's like, holy fuck. And I'm like, oh man. You know, I we get, I ever talked to him and they were they were like, we were supposed to go to the Arnold this weekend, so we decided to come out to eat. And I'm like, fucking cool beans, dude. And he's like, I never would have thought you'd come walking through that door. I'm like, we Why? just had a plan. <laughs> They, it's our spot. This is I'm the I'm the I, I was like the sixth seventh I was the seventh wheel. The, uh, you seventh were wheel, yeah. yeah. Hannah was away at the gymnastics. Mm -hmm. We had pack orders all weekend, so I was uh, I was the seventh wheel. I accepted no responsibility this weekend for anything. I was like, I'm gonna order the steak. That's all I want. You guys order everything else. I'm eating whatever shows up on a table. Yep. No responsibility. <laughs> None. <laughs> Oh man, it was good. I couldn't try the oysters yet. I just fucking love oysters. Just freak me out. I love them. I'm a huge seafood guy. They have really, really good ones. Yeah, the oysters there are really good. I'm becoming a seafood guy, so I am yeah. pacing myself. I don't want to ruin. Bob what's doesn't going on. even eat fucking condiments. I you don't, don't even eat condiments. No. So what we were in when we were in fucking San Antonio, Bob ate snails. I did. That's really? cargo. Yeah. That's cargoes. He That's ate, a good step. He ate two of them. Mm -hmm. Most people won't, won't fuck with none of them. No. Do you like them? He ate I two mean, of actually, them. Actually, yeah, they were pretty fucking Bro, they good. Were, they were really good. I think they were like crusted in like Parmesan, Parmesan or some shit. Parmesan, yeah. Fucking. J-Prime. Yeah. Killer spot. Great spot. Loved that place. Um, but yeah, we'll I love We'll be oysters. back in Texas soon. Yeah, next weekend. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Oh, shit. That is next weekend. Fuck yeah, two weekends. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, not, uh, I was going to say Houston. Nope, but it's uh, Austin, Texas, and Dallas. Austin and Dallas? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're in, uh, we're in, I think Austin Saturday, 
and Dallas Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. Yeah, we're flying out of Dallas to come home. Yep. Mm-hmm. Five star. I like Texas, dude. I do too. Yeah. I love Texas. It's like the one spot that we traveled to. I don't get annoyed with anything. Nope. I My ne- kind of people. I never have a problem going. To, I only have a problem going to Texas when it's fucking August. I'll, yeah, I'll take that back. It was way too hot. We were down for Branch's show that year. End of July. Oh my fucking God. stupid hot. Like, I'm cool, dude. But no one, like, they say it's brutal. Like, they they think it's brutal, too. Like, yes. no, no one enjoys that level of heat. But I feel like everyone handles it so well down there. I don't handle it well at all. Like, you look at me, I just look awful. <sighs> Greasy face, fucking pitting out. Bro, I got, I got the heebie-jeebies thinking. <laughs> that one time, I was doing cardio in the morning. And it was, it's already 80 degrees. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got cleaned up and back down for 8, 30, 9 o'clock, it was high 80s. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, the sun didn't even fucking all the way get in the sky yet. Like, it's not like 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock's the hottest time of the day. 2 o'clock, it was 107. It's like, good Lord, what the fuck is going on here? They're living in that shit all summer long. Oh, no. No, and they're like everybody. Everybody else from up north, it's like, oh, it's a dry heat, motherfucker. It is just hot. Call it what you want. The coolest thing was seeing that kid with a cape on. Remember, we were, we were walking into Branch's show. I think I forgot my bag, and uh, Shane was like, oh, I'll run back and grab it. So we're waiting, standing in the front, like in the the place, like the entryway of there, and then one of the the competitor, the dude that won the show. Uh-huh. Walked in with his family. Oh, yes. And the son was like, loves Darth Vader and Star Wars. And it's 107 fucking degrees. And bro has a blanket cape. Yeah. Like it's a blanket as a cape. It was like, it was like a cloak. Yes. Like a hood, like heavy. Yes. Yeah. It was not light. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? And he's like, I know. They're like, yeah, we know. We know. Can't stop him. And I'm like, so this is life in Texas. Kid don't give a fuck. He's nope. like, I'm Darth Vader, motherfucker, and I'm keeping my cape on. <laughs> They're like, we're washing that fucking thing at least twice this week, all right? <laughs> Dude. I was like, I looked and I was like, what? The- I forgot about that. Oh, I was I was howling. Yeah, I loved it. Uh, yeah, we're going back here. I like it. be exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jay, did you do anything exciting this weekend? Well, now that you ask, I uh, packed some orders this weekend. Oh. <laughs> we had a couple. <laughs> on, on Friday, everybody's like, oh, by the end of the day, on Friday we were at, when we went to dinner, Amanda's like, we got the 805. I'm like, oh, man, you guys were pumping. And she says, no, we got to, like, the orders that we did were from 8 p.m. to 8.05 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's how many they got that's oh that's my. how many there were at that point yeah so they got through uh i think what you guys got around 1500 yeah yeah 1500 someone, done. someone said there's still a couple thousand left yeah the numbers the numbers didn't go down but they didn't go higher than what we had to start with <laughs> Yeah, it was an intense weekend for the team for yeah. sure no they're killing it they're still packing now mm-hmm. but uh did you go get a Did you go get a futon, Jay? No, didn't have time. No, I, I, actually, what I did, I went out afterwards, went down to the strip with some friends. Mm. Nice. Have you heard of Cinderlands? No. No. Oh, Shane knows Cinderlands. What is Cinderlands? I don't. I have no idea. I guess it was a bar in the strip, or uh huh. Yeah, but they they built this like big warehouse now that has like a whole bunch of like party games and stuff on the inside. Really nice place. No shit. Mm. Yeah. Cinderlands. Mm-hmm. I never heard of it. What kind of party games? Not not like uh like I guess they pong? had like foosball, ping pong. Mm. They had a <laughs> it was really cool. The floor set up and like wood boxed in for bocce ball. Oh. I love bocce. I'm show, Italian. The show loves board. foosball. Yeah. Is there like foosball table? Yep. The show's pretty good. He go to foosball. Yeah, he probably would. I could see him talking a ton of shit. Well, it better be a good table because he'll he'll torque the fucking he'll torque the handles right off that bitch. Oh really? Oh yeah. Tell me a story. Oh, bent got it. one for the house. He bent it first first fucking turn. It's a show. He went he went he went boomer on it. Got the cheap one. Fucking right. He did. I don't think it was his choice. Uh, I think Kate got it, and then he was like, "Ah, oh, fucking bent the handle." Oh, he's into it. Shows a uh, good bowler too. 
Yeah. He, I'd like to see the show go head to head with Jay uh, in a few frames. Bowling. Yep. Yeah. Jay's good at hand sports. Hand sports. Arm yep. sports. Arm and hand sports. Arm and hand sports. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yard darts. Yard games. Mm-hmm. A little cornhole. Mm-hmm. He's very confident about this. Jay's good with games. Mm. I, I'm not as good with games. No, Kim usually wins. Fuck. Fuck her, dude. Kim's always better at everything. Whenever we go anywhere, Kim's always better at If I you. beat her at something, she let me win. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> She she just picks things up so fucking fast. Pisses me off. Things I don't want her to win at, I don't ever introduce them to her. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no, we're not doing that, honey. <laughs> no, Even no, though no. I love it. I don't want to get beat at it. Beats me at fucking everything. Oh, that's crazy. In better shape than I am right now. Yep. Pissing me off. Yep. That's why I'm... That's why what, Bob? I don't know if I want to tell the internet. You don't know if you want to tell the internet? I don't know. Might might be doing keto. Might be. Pretty much doing keto. <laughs> <laughs> Giving it another try. You're going in. I'm going to give it the old college try, though. Yeah. At least a month. Got to go 30 days. I want to feel it. I want to I want to see what it's all about. I really do. I am so excited to hear about this. What I was doing is not working. Bob is the pickiest fucking eater you will ever meet. Mm-hmm. He's worse than my five-year-old, six-year-old yep. now. Yep. Yeah, picky as fuck. So I'm very I, I'm 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 a big fan. I think it's a great diet. It's very rigorous. It's very rigid. Very well, I'm, stick I, to certain things. I'm not disciplined with my shit. So no. I needed to implement a diet that's very high disciplined. I have to. Yeah. You you are but you're a fat fuck. Yep. You are a fat kid at heart. Big time. Love our snacks. Mm-hmm. Set in your ways. You are now transition and, and you've done bodybuilding stuff. Your whole mm-hmm. your whole the way you diet. Yeah. Chicken and rice, mm-hmm. fucking low Training. fat, moderate carbs, carb cycling, mm-hmm. everything like it. And now you are going to transition into fat, fat with some protein. Mm-hmm. You're going to be eating f- more fat than you've ever eaten before in your life. I know. It's going to be the craziest transition. But I think within the first week, I said to you over the weekend, I was like, first week, you'll lose probably over 10 pounds. I'm definitely going to. I know it. Yeah, for sure. Just just from being on a plan to begin with, I'm going to lose it. And then... What, what, what weight did you start at? Would you weigh... Wouldn't you start this on Saturday, like yeah. halfway through the day? Yeah, because Kim's like, why, why would you just eat like shit the rest of the day and then start tomorrow? She's like, just start from this meal right now. So that after you... You yeah. came over Saturday, Saturday right? Yeah. yeah, as soon as you left... Oh, really? Yeah. Keto. Because it just like it set me off, and uh, I weighed 236.2 pounds Saturday. You write that down? Write that down. 236.2. <clears throat> so <laughs> and I, I did weigh myself again this morning because um, I didn't think that was a good gauge because I ate really shitty Friday night, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, this morning I was 232.4. So you're 232.4. Yeah, so I'm down four plus pounds since Saturday already. But yeah. that's probably just not sure, eating I'm as just, much. And, yeah. But uh, I'm I'm pretty excited about it. There is one thing I have to, I might have to do to like keep me on track. I might have to unfollow Dean. Oh. Because the fucking the snack king was killing me this weekend. It was just out of control. I even messaged him. I was like, you eat way too much. And he just says, LOL. <laughs> God damn it. Well, it's like that dude, Ryan, we were just talking about. He's doing the show and he's fucking posting food stuff. Mm-hmm. It's getting in his head. No, you're, you'll be good. No, uh, I, th- I think I'll be good. I'm, I'm even changing the, the way I'm training. I, I just, I want to, I want to just feel and see a different, mm-hmm. different version of myself. Yeah. I'm ready for it. Oh yeah. I'm just doing a ton of cardio and I stopped eating shit. What I was doing was not working. Just wasn't working. No. Even if I did four to six cardio sessions a week. No. I was, it was the same pace, same way every morning. 30 days. Yep. 30 days. Mm-hmm. And then you throw in your, your, your cheat meals, mm-hmm. and that's what it is. The whole goal of a diet is not to be whether you're not in keto or out of keto or, or in here or whatever. It's to feel good. Mm-hmm. It's to feel good and look good. Like, overall health is always important, obviously. Yeah. 
but like you need to make sure that you're doing something that's bettering you. So it's, you know, once the, I wanted to be nice and juicy for the Arnold. And now that Arnold didn't happen, I'm just, I just work out once a day and I do fucking cardio once a day. So I do 45 minutes of cardio, 30 minutes of cardio is a joke again. Oh, yeah. I did 30 minutes the other day. And I'm like, Oh man, this is, I'm done. Burn 400 and 400 some calories killing it. And then I'm like, Oh, 45 minutes is the number. So if I do 45 minutes to an hour of cardio a day and I'm not eating fucking trash anymore, I'm just like, I can't, I just want to, I want my shit schedule to be very on point. Mm -hmm. Most important thing for me, that fucking old guy. Intestinal cancer is like my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. I, I, I came across something last week about it. It was a big study because intestinal cancer is very, really big with men. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -mm, ooh. So take care of that colon. Yeah. Healthy colon. Your gut's so important. So, uh, yep, I do a ton of cardio, eating healthy. It's good. I'm curious about the keto for you. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm, I'd like to see. I can't wait to see. The face change. The face change. It's going to. The face change with people that, that switch to keto, especially someone such as yourself who has never done it, is going to be very drastic. Mm -hmm. You'll like it. You'll like be like, ah, oh, like look how chiseled my jaw is. What? You'll be like the Instagram models that like flex their jaw whenever they're whenever they're uh whenever they're doing their poses they'll be like diet face flex or jaw show it yeah they'll make sure it's there throw their hair back <laughs> no it, it shouldn't be too bad i mean kim kim's full keto so she's cooking this yeah, way you got, anyway you got a fucking woman I have that's no going kids to at make house. that's yeah. gonna make every fucking keto recipe under the sun mm -hmm. yeah fuck you she ma she's making lunch for us today Oh, nice! Uh, here at the office, and uh, I'm sorry, I just it said is keto. It is keto friendly, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> oh shit! But this I'm not posting shit. Nope. About what I'm doing. Nope. You just made the mistake. Now everybody's gonna make fun of you. No, they won't. Not when I look awesome in 30 days. Fucking everything will be better. Balls will be a little saggier. Dick will be bigger. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. I'm anxious for the see how this thing works. Oh, the mental aspect is what I yeah. still, I, I, the, how the clear, the mental clarity is, is crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'll be good. Yep. Excited. Ketones. Was, yep. I had fun today. Mm -hmm. Doing a little bitch in the beginning about coronavirus. It's okay. It's okay. Watch me get the coronavirus now. Like I'm going to die. <laughs> They love that. Listen like, to that one in their headphones. Like, like in my fingers. <laughs> uh, no, but I think uh, Jay is going to. Jay was. Jay's here uh, interning on the uh, <laughs> podcast over there. I'm the contingency plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just in case we do fire Shane at one yeah. point, we needed a backup plan because this fucker over here is still still only seen like 30 minutes of Rocky, still fucking complaining. So we had to put Jay in today. To Shane is now training Jay because Shane might be outed at some point. Fucking, you could do your job to the best, but if you don't fucking keep up with your extracurricular, you can get the fuck out of here. Yep. <laughs> Gets laid like six times, and all of a sudden he's, fuck you guys. <laughs> Thinks he can take a vacation and shit? I know. The hell? Fucking didn't even request off. Just told us I'm going on vacation. I didn't see a form. I didn't see shit. Nothing. Didn't come across my desk. And then I'm like, w w where are you going? He's like, oh, me and Alexis are going somewhere. I'm like, oh, pussy. Okay, you're good. Go have fun. <laughs> all changed. Oh, it's my brother's wedding. Oh, fuck. I can't yell at you about this. Now we're all going on vacation with Shane. Yep. So in July, we're all going on vacation. <laughs> we got the condo right next to him and his girl. Yep. It's going to be great. Yep. <laughs> Taking the podcast gear. Okay, well, we're going to put him to work then. I'm going to videotape it all. <laughs> Shane's it's gonna be like fuck they're actually here <laughs> Shane is it's like oh they'd never come and then he lays down at night and he's thinking he's like those fuckers actually might show up one day or no like we're just all sitting on the beach he's sitting there like just doesn't know and we're like hey shane <laughs> he's like what the fuck i'm expecting like so many facetimes because i got facetimed by pat and mike on friday night yeah <laughs> They were like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm sleeping. It's freaking 1230. <laughs> they got home after they left dinner, got home. They fucking FaceTimed them. Yeah. 
they're like, I have to go to work in the morning. He's like, I have to go to work in the morning. And they're like, fuck you. We'll be there too. Yeah. We'll all be tired together. It's fine. Uh, <clears throat> that's too much fun. But anyway, uh, we're going to close out the podcast like we do all the time with ask the or answer the internet, the Barstool Sports question game, where uh, it's a card game. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you got to look it up. It's great. But they are, it says, I'm reading the box right now, answer the internet. Questions as fucked up as you are. This has become a notorious game with everybody. Everywhere we go, they have their own questions that they've formed. Yeah. And they're more fucked up than these ones sometimes. Yes. Which is awesome because all that means is everybody is asking questions, having fun, being more interactive with their people, their coworkers, their friends, their family, texts. People fucking hit me up and say all this. I'm like, man, this is great because we're building a culture, feeling the shit, all the good shit, having fun, enjoying it all. I love it. So... Without further ado, Jay, let us have it. Let's hear him. Okay. The first question is pull the internet. Pull the internet. When you're drunk, is it better to get laid or have the ideal drunk meal? Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Oh, that's a good question. I'm in deep thought right now. Because, like, when you're drunk, so there's, only, there's only... There's only two things that you want when you're drunk, and that's sex and food. Mm -hmm. And if you're telling me I can't have both, I'm going to be in trouble. And it depends on what type of drunk I am. Depends on how tuned up I am, where I'm at, like, like who I'm with. Like if I'm out drinking with Bob and the guys, I'm cool coming home and eating. I'll just have a good meal and go to bed and be happy. But if Han and I are out for dinner and we're having a nice time or we're out at the casino or we were out grab assing all night at fucking Vegas in the casino, like, I think I could eat a fucking pretzel and be just fine. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking going in. I'm, I'm reflecting on some fun times me and Kim had together, like binging on that drunk meal. Oh. Like that'd be our, our thing sometimes, like get out of the bar, go to Wawa. Wawa is like a sheet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most people that. don't most know. Most people Wawa. don't know. But they had Big gas station. They have really good hoagies at Wawa. They hoagies. just did. So, like, we'd go in and get all the shit. Hoagie sandwich, bag of chips, fresh drink. Yeah. Maybe like a sweet. And go home and just, like, sit there all tuned up. And I can't, I, I, I can't disagree. Maybe get some loving in the morning. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just okay. move the order around. Yeah, move the order. I'm not having that meal and then doing sweet loving. Not. Oh no, that your fuckability is way down. Yep, I'm no longer functional. So sometimes we'd grab the grab the food, go home, sweet love, and then then the the post drunk meal. Yeah, and that depends on how fucking tuned up you are at that point. Yeah, sometimes you're like eating in the car, like you're already you're already into it. We both might give each other that look, like <laughs> let, let's let's just eat, all right. <laughs> I don't know what to think now. I'm all keto now, so I don't know if there's any fun drunk meals. I don't even know if I can drink. Uh, you're Alcohol. okay. You're good. Stop worrying about it. Answer the fucking question. Uh, I'm going to go with the, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough one. I probably, like I said, it depends on, uh, I depend on who I'm drinking with. Like, I mean. They both have their place. Yeah, they both got their place. There's, there is depends. The last time I got laid too. Uh, was like it, it was three like, hours ago yeah, or right. twelve hours ago? Yeah. Uh, I give. It wasn't like before we went out. Then I have to hold off on the meal. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> it just depends. If I'm all if I'm all fucking tuned up and I, we've been we've been having fun together, there is nothing like fucking. There's nothing like really great fucking hot and heated drunk sex. Like some in, some inappropriate things start occurring. I might say some shit. She might say some shit. It's like I didn't even know I liked that shit. And then you're like, man, we're into some weird shit. We're together. This is great. And it just gets even more intense. And then the next day you wake up and you're like, Jesus Christ, I said that? You liked it? Yeah, you did this. What? Or like say it, I say it again or do something again. They're not no, the same mood. No, I'm like, no, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Keep that out of there. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm taking the drunk sex. It's way too much fun. I have so much fun with Anna. This fucking my life's so cool. <laughs> I'm taking that. I'll eat a pretzel. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Uh, well, first off, that is 53% uh, said the meal. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Not not significant. I can't. Yeah, I can't, I can't give anybody any shit. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm a foodie. <coughs> but I'm cool with salty pretzels. Next. Uh, this one's a little tamer. Would you rather wear winter clothes in the summer or summer clothes in the winter? <sighs> this is a no-brainer for me. <laughs> Bob's like, I'm wearing summer clothes in the winter, motherfucker. Fuck I do. <laughs> Pretty much do. Bob walks in on a – it's two fucking degrees. Bob has the same thing on whenever it's 40 degrees. I'll walk from fucking my house to my truck. jeans yeah. and a pair of shoes. I'll walk from my house to the truck, 40 yards, get nope. in the truck and take off my jacket. I just <laughs> – I don't think I've seen you with a with a heavier jacket than your fucking cowboy your cowboy jacket. I'm I'm constantly getting hot hotter. Yeah. I am because we we packed away my beanies yesterday. I packed them away. She's like, "Why are these out?" I'm like, "Well, it's you know it's still winter time." And she's like, "You haven't worn one yet this year." No. Granted, it was kind of mild, but it was I very mild. I run way too hot. Yeah. I'm doing summer clothes in the winter time. I don't want to wear winter clothes in the summertime because of my skin problems now. Mm-hmm. Like I can't fucking do it. I wear a hoodie way less now. Mm-hmm. I don't even fucking no. It's Hives. Skin disorder. It's weird. I'm allergic to the sun sometimes. Yeah, not all the time. Not all the times. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I don't think I'm ever gonna figure it out either. It's a science thing. Yeah think yep i'll wear winter i'll wear summer clothes in the winter time how about you boys i'd rather be cold in the winter than really really hot in the summer yeah yeah i don't want to wear a carhartt in 90 degree weather that'd suck i'd die i'd look shredded though i'd, I'd just look awful i wouldn't be able to go anywhere <laughs> fucking sweaty pig Blah. It's like a swamp ass question. I hate swamp ass. Nope. I like feeling nice and clean and yeah. cool. 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 Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one. Okay. Pull the internet. Would you rather prematurely come in your pants before sex or start crying mid sex? <laughs> Another no-brainer here. Well, I've done both, so. <laughs> I'm thinking just. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I'm, I'm coming in my pants. Before or, you even go at it. Or I'm crying halfway through. And as long as she can't see my face, I can hold that. I can hold those tears in. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a mood breaker. Fuck. Yeah, so is yeah. the first one. All, oh. all I'm envisioning is just the the like the act of it happening. Like if I was ever in that situation and just like blown a load in your pants, and you're just like, <laughs> oh man, I'm really sorry. <laughs> like, what do you say? Like, whoops. Like, oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess that'd be the question. Do I get it? Do I get to go at it again after I blow the load in my pants? <laughs> oh my god, dude! Nope. Oh my god. I'm I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Just hope she doesn't notice. I think oh. crying is the best option, though, because if you do it premature, then it's over before it started. Yeah. At least when you're in the middle, you can just cry. And be at like, least. Oh, honey, what's wrong? I'll just flip over. It's fine. <laughs> Don't look at me. Don't look at my face. Are you crying? No. This pussy's so good. <laughs> it's magical. I'm a little emotional today. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm taking the crying because maybe like the first half I'm so good that it make up for the crying. 
I'll have to ask Hannah if, if how, what would happen if I cried. Like, how would you handle it? She'd probably make fun of me. <laughs> she already makes fun of me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm crying for sure. Yep. Yep. Uh, Is there an answer to that? Ooh. Right down the middle, 50% <laughs> readers said start crying. Oh, my God, really? So 50% are, bl- 50% are like, I'm not fucking crying. I'm a man. I'm a man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, apparently. Good job. Uh, everybody has their reason. I'd love- So what are you doing, Jay? I got to think the pants. Oh, uh, yeah, you're conceal, going in. Conceal it and then just act like nothing happened and keep going oh uh, that's an option if that's an option that might that's not bad i didn't think of that angle yeah mm. that's Gotta you'd have to, to be you'd be able to rebound like a motherfucker big rebound game you might have to uh you might have to go in there fake chow it and get prepared and re and and, and re, regroup your shit yeah it, yeah extend the uh i mean if and if you are a premature ejaculator you probably can rebound pretty quick mm-hmm. you'd have to be able to yeah I don't think you get stuck with one or the other. Like you can, you can get your way out of that. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I like it. I like it. Good strategy. Fake chow. You got fifteen minutes of fake chow, and then got to go in. Yeah, maybe five, eight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to think about this. How am I going to handle myself? You can't get away with more than seven minutes of fake chow. <laughs> it's science. It's like, why is this so consistent the same way? <laughs> it's the same noise. Hold on. Hold on. What are you doing down there? <laughs> and you're, I'm like, I'm and, like this. Like, I'm on my phone. <laughs> what? So, oh, hey. So, Robin Williams had this thing where he... He did this thing. He was doing a skit about eating a, eating this woman out, and it's like this. This is this is all she sees. <laughs> Fucking in there. <laughs> Fucking. Oh my god. Going to town in there. Like, if she don't see that, then but you ain't getting away with the fake chow. You gotta be in there. <laughs> oh yeah, good call, Jay. What about you, Shane? I'm definitely crying. <laughs> no, no rebounding for me. <sighs> He's. You can't depend on the rebound. Oh. Uh, I'm a. I have like a. It's a offensive game plan. Yeah, very not intense. Defense. I'm not rebounding. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, there's no. There's You're not no boxing backup. out. I'm going in for the win. <laughs> I'm just going in for the win. Yeah. Triple doubles, bitch. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh man, yeah, yep. I happen to agree, but uh, okay, yeah. The rebound's not a bad game, though. Yep, young. Fucking seventeen year old fucking hard on you can whack off the fucking wall. <laughs> Not breaking that thing. Breaking that thing. Uh-uh. Oh man. I watched this movie before I watched that movie The Long Shot with Seth Rogan mm-hmm. and Char Charlize Sh- Sh- Theron. And uh there was part of it where he's like he talked about whenever they knew each other. Uh Seth Rogan and her and he whenever he was like a thirteen year old thirteen year old, apparently he got like a thirteen year old boner like in front of her and he's telling his friend this story and he's like i got a 13 year old boner hard as fuck and he's like harder than a motherfucker 13 <laughs> years old just fucking that boner was not going nowhere you couldn't even fucking you couldn't flip and tuck that bitch if you tried it was pushing everything over <laughs> oh man so funny the good old days oh yeah <clears throat> Oh, shit. Well, good stuff, everybody. Oh, Make yeah. sure you replay those questions back for yourself. Ask your friends, ask your family, your coworkers, everybody on the job site. Always got to have a good time. One thing that I do ask of you all from this podcast is please share the shit out of it. 
you are succeeding because I see everybody. We are gaining new people listening. We're getting messages, how much they enjoy what we're doing. And, I mean, I couldn't be having any more fun with this. I love it. It's so cool. It's so cool to see everybody and hear everybody and all the good shit that's going on in their life. And everywhere we go, we get the questions. Mm -hmm. Keep the questions going. Keep the good shit going. Loving your family. Working hard for everybody. Loving the kids. Spring's here. Fucking outside sports. Jay's going to challenge anybody to any hand sports. I can't wait for show to fucking lose his shit on him one time. Yep. It's going to be great. It's going to happen. All right, everybody. Thank you for everything you guys do. Fucking A. Keep killing it. Love and life.